All right, look, this is a special announcement. It's true, the aliens are coming. It has been confirmed. If you appear foreign drones, it is an urgent national security problem. If it is something else, it is an issue for science. UFOs are real, aliens are coming. So why am I saying this? Here's why. When they come here, it's almost likely, 100% likely, that they will eat the fat ones first. Get fit, survive the alien invasion. <laughs> That was a real ad. Hey, bro, stop. stop. <laughs> what? Why waste our time talking about calories and building muscle? Yeah, yeah, what are we even doing? The aliens invaded. are here, you hey, guys. Hey, listen. <laughs> they're going to eat us. You know, you don't want to be the delicious. <laughs> the delicious. Bro, hands down. You know, the <laughs> why best, are you walking around? The best 24 yeah. hour fitness billboard slash ad ever done in the fitness space. A lot of people don't know that. That They put up an ad. It's old. I want to say 90s. What, 98, 99. Something like that. And it said when they come, they will eat the fat it. ones first. And yeah. they got protested. And oh. It was uh, insane. Huge yeah. controversy. It was insane. Yeah. No, I mean, look. It was all, hilarious. Uh, look, all serious. Let's, let's be serious about this now. They're probably not real because now the government says they're real, Justin. Uh, I, I, now thank I don't you. Believe. Okay, so listen. 100%. Over, the, over our, our little vacation, the little mini vacation that we all took, uh, my friends were obviously talking about this. And I'm like, uh, they're like asking me. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, I, I, said, I, I work with two conspiracy theorists and, <laughs> yeah. and fucking alien, ancient alien guys already. I was like, I don't need to think about this anymore. They do enough reading and digging for me and like really really this is crazy news all this stuff like that and i'm like listen now that the government is admitting it and sharing it i'm more skeptical about what we're not seeing exactly yes that's how i feel i'm like Thank you. oh this is so convenient right now like too convenient yeah what else is really going on that all of a sudden we're going to start talking listen, about this right they now? they only have so many buttons you guys okay yeah <laughs> right they've literally yeah. gone through every one of the buttons yes. like bio weapons you know you you name it dude everything they've already done yeah the killer wasps the, that didn't work what else is going to scare us monkey I pox mean, didn't work super volcano was my thought maybe but aliens they decided to go that route. well so okay so i actually thought you two would actually be all on this so it's kind of interesting you went this route because i thought that's i was going to be the the turd in the punch bowl no here. you know why because uh okay think about it logically if this was real if they've been visiting us and mm -hmm. we know about this and the military has access to this and this is crazy technology and all this stuff and this is huge threat let's say it's real a why would they tell us why would they tell us? They mm -hmm. would never tell us. Uh, so I, if it was real, we wouldn't know. So yeah. the fact that they're telling us tells me yeah. that there's there's another reason why. It makes no sense as to why they would even My speculation us. is this whole push for uh, the, the climate um, changes, it, it's not alarming people as much as they'd hoped. Mm. And so they have to kind of up the ante a little bit and maybe, maybe have it like being voiced from an alien saying, oh, hey, you know, you guys are really destroying your planet and you should really, you know, consider mm. not going to work and driving your car anymore. It's leaking over to our galaxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the get fumes your, are heading out into space. Together, we're coming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, no. We're going to see a translation like that. No. It's going to be like a trip, like a, some weird beeping noise. Well, I mean, like, look, this is what they're trying to Tell us. To put things in perspective, <laughs> they still keep the file on JFK sealed. The, the assassination file. Okay. They they literally so many attempts have been put out to like release it. Like yeah. let us know what like what's right. going on. And they again said no, it will compromise national security. We can't let this out. This is how many decades after? And they're gonna tell us that, oh yeah, we know about UFOs and non-human entities. By the way, a non-human entity could also be a dog or a monkey or an animal that we put up in a space and that we recovered. So they could also play games with words and stuff. But I don't, I don't, I don't. Interesting. Really. I thought you guys would okay. be hook, line, and sinker in no. this. No, plus Project the mind Blue of a conspiracy Game. theorist is always the opposite. Yes, anyway. uh, yeah, I know. Uh, is that, isn't, that, <laughs> isn't that the truth? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. No, we just question power all the time because it's a big, it's a big. If people, everybody gets on board with this, like think about how easily they'll be able to manipulate. Uh, people to to do whatever like yeah. it, it influence people in a certain direction and uh you know come in with like new policies and and regulations and you know so i i guess my people. conspiracy is always like where where are they going to use this information like what what is this why is this like coming out now you know when it was withheld for so long and and, and there was so much um, speculation long time ago and people like made careers out of trying to uh, uh, disclose all of this like uh, X-File information. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't buy I didn't buy yeah. any of it. No I, watched, I watched the whole thing and it's like they say a whole bunch of nothing. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, so there's like literally nothing like real clear. Dude, plus we have drones now that can project images in the sky. So you don't think they're going to be able to use that to create like spaceships and have things? Have you ever read about, scary. Have you, you know Project Bluebeam. Have you ever read that? No. So apparently it was this like this plan that was like somebody leaked and what they were going to do is, is fake an alien invasion and then project into the sky uh, like uh, religious figures and try to create a new world religion to organize the world around this united mission and yeah. then they could do like a worldwide digital currency and the whole deal. And that's an old, that came out in the seventies, I think if I'm not mistaken, when uh, that was first. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's funny. I know. Right. Yeah. Project Blue Bean. <laughs> I didn't even know that was. Look thing. it up. Not Project Blue Balls. That's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Project Blue. Anyway. I, so I'm, I'm more. So, okay. Since we went down this conspiracy okay. hole, right. Which a small percentage of our audience enjoys. <laughs> <laughs> I am yeah, more I fascinated with or curious about the, uh, how convenient it is for Hollywood to be on strike when the, you know, sound of freedom is like, Oh, bust an ass in the, yeah. in the box office and yeah. crush it. Yeah. Conveniently wow. all the, uh, Hollywood actors decided to, to take strike and, and not show up to work all the time. I can't. Kind of weird to me. I can't. Just, I can't watch that movie, by the way. I read about it. Uh, I can't watch it. I already lost actually sleep. bought tickets and didn't go See? watch it because I just want to support it. I lost sleep. Oh, wow. Did you really? That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. That's actually I really lost good sleep idea. over reading about it. I'll do that. Because, dude, yeah. It's, it's, you don't I'm the same. Like, it. Yeah, exactly. That stuff's like too real to me, you know, to like, I don't take it in and, and sit there and like be entertained. So I, I heard one one of the the best parts or most powerful things I think is actually the ending is where I heard it's out where they just start listing all the stats, and that's the part I think that's so interesting about the the some of the outlets that were painting it as this like right wing conspiracy theory type of thing when it's like, dude, it literally is just these are all legit facts that yeah. they they post at the end of like the stats. This is a real person in their. Uh, portraying his story well and did you see what tim kennedy came out when he talked about it and he says as powerful and as real it is it's the um what did he i forget what analogy or what metaphor he used to like it's basically like the uh this is very soft version of the reality yeah, yeah right He's like this is the an example of a ca you know cases that were solved or found or that we know about he goes the stuff that we <sighs> don't see and we don't find and stuff like that is far more worse than what, I what you see. I where, can't handle yeah, it. And you just got to ask yourself, where's the motivation with trying to suppress the, or uh, basically pin that to uh, some other like, like it's QAnon or, or whatever else they're trying to kind of like uh, deflect that information. Why are they trying to deflect this real information that's coming out that there's all of this sex traffic rings and it's it's tied to Dude. very powerful people in the world it's like did you hear about the reporter it was a reporter who wrote this huge article about how pizza gate remember all those emails and stuff oh, oh yeah this. he ends up getting caught with a bunch of child, porn. child pornography yeah. yeah yeah i know can i hmm. you know i'm gonna say hmm. and did you know in california I think they made it not a felony. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Till all the parents and everybody else rallied and, and protested. And then finally, like, they reversed that. Listen, you. It, it took the, a whole community of I think outrage. You heard a kid uh, that should, we should get, you should have the worst punishment of any crime. I mean, that's how it is you in prison. Child. I mean, that's the, that's the yeah. unsaid code in prison. If you're somebody who does something to kids and you come in prison, you're getting you fucked get, up, yeah. destroyed. You can do anything else you, you come into prison for yeah. and, and, and be able to get along with people with that. But you fuck with kids and you come into prison like that, you, you get well, messed that's up. That's why I can't watch it, man. It gives me nightmares God, no, because I, I read so about angry. it. I made the mistake of reading about it. And um, it's worse. There's stuff that happens that's so bad. I don't even want to repeat it because it literally I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. Yeah. yeah, on some of the stuff that that I read. But anyway, all right, I'm gonna. Switch. I, I like the idea though, so I'm gonna do that. I think that's because I, I, I was too. like, you know what, I really should go to support it. Then at the same time too, I'm like torn. Like, oh god, I don't know if I need to see that. Like, you know, right. So, but I do like the idea. Yeah, I've been though. following Tim Ballard for a long time, man. I love that he, you know, was on the front line for all that and like putting information out. So it's been years, you know, before this movie or anything came out. Like, I was aware of a lot Dis of the efforts. Disney there. bought it. And they yeah. failed to release it. Well, five years it was sitting there. You know that? Yeah. They bought it and they didn't want to release it. That's so weird. I know, dude. <sighs> uh. Today's giveaway is the RGB bundle. Here's how you can win that. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Everybody else, we got a sale going on. MAPS Anabolic Advanced, our strongest muscle building program that we offer. 
half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, I got to switch gears to fitness here for a second. Okay. I've talked about this before, and uh, the amount of messages that I've gotten in regard to this advice that I've given a couple times on the show, it's probably one of the most commented on like fitness tips that I've had. And it's the sound silly. So people watching, listening right now, if you haven't done this, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It is the having sodium or using Element or one of our, our, our partner's products before and during your workouts for a better pump. The, the messages I'm getting are, people are messaging me and being like, bro, you saved me so much money on pre-workout pump form. It's like, I did Element and he's like, I had the most insane, intense pump yeah. I've had in my entire life just from adding this to my water. I didn't know sodium could totally do this. I, rem I remember yeah. when I was, uh, this was, you know, long after I'd been a trainer already 10, 15 years, tried every single, you know, pump formula that was out there and finally making the connection of just water and then water and sodium together <laughs> yeah. was like, yeah. a, <laughs> yeah, it's like it literally shits on any of the coolest scientific products that are out there that are on the market is literally just water loading with sodium. It yeah. will it will blow your muscle bellies up yeah. more than any of these, which is so funny. You know what I'm saying? It's salt water. Like, you know what? Cheap. <laughs> Cheap and easy. We also I, I also got a message from a yep. woman. We had somebody, we had a live QA and somebody had talked about how they had headaches. And I said, you know, what kind of diet are you on? She's like, mm. a, a whole natural based, kind of low carb. I said, you need to increase your sodium, see if that helps. Anyway, I've gotten also several messages from uh two, it was two from women, one from a guy who had kind of these like like headaches that would reoccur. They're like, dude, I added element or sodium to my diet, my headaches are gone. Right. Wow. Like I can't even believe, you know, so, but it's, it's such a, it's an essential compound. Yeah. You, and if you have, if you eat a diet that is quote unquote clean, meaning most of the food you eat is not processed. You're, you probably need to add sodium to your diet, especially if you work out. Literally. Well, that's, I, think, that's, I think that's the reason why yeah. it's not communicated enough because that's not the majority of people. The majority of people eat a very high processed food. They get loads of sodium in their diet already. Yeah. But w the audience that we speak to are mostly people that are trying to make better choices, right. that we continue to pitch to them the importance of avoiding processed foods and eating whole natural foods. But then you have this information that you don't hear in mm -hmm. like everywhere else, which is you need to increase your sodium. Because of that, you're dramatically – I there's got to be something to be said too about – the person who's been on a highly processed diet, very, very high sodium diet for most of their life, and then all of a sudden goes to, because there's 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 like normal levels, then there's like super high levels of high, like lots of processed foods. And then there has to be something to do with the body adapting to those new high levels and then going to an extreme opposite. Sometimes people will go off heavily processed foods, eat lots of whole natural foods and have headaches. Yeah. That's actually uh, not uncommon. And what we used to say, which I hate because we were wrong, was oh it's your body detox, <laughs> which is not what it's it was you so need I, more sodium. If you time. if you've been right. listening for a long time, you you heard me talk about this, and uh, I remember the way I solved it was this was long before we were even working with Element uh, was uh, dill pickles, mm. and it was like magic. Like all of a sudden, I would get at, like I, my headache would go away and stuff like that. I'd be like, what the hell is going on? I eat this I eat this pickle, and then all of a sudden my Wait, so you didn't you know, know they're marketing. Sodium? Yeah, that, that was now. that was bad. Don't you remember we talked about this on the podcast? No, I know that, but you didn't know it was the sodium. No, I didn't know that's what. Oh no, I knew once I ate the pickle. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that. Oh, oh, it must be my sodium. But <laughs> you're like all, you're all pickles. Yeah, it's gotta yeah. be something yeah. about the pickle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, dude. I'll run into like random friends where that's like a trend right now. Is like uh, they're in health space. They're promoting like to eat like pickles like like that. It's yeah. for the sodium. For the so yeah. yeah, they're not even attributed to the sodium. They're trying to make it like the next goji berry. You know, it's like it does all these like magical things. By the way, I love pickles. They're delicious. But yeah. It's the sodium. It's the sodium. That's, That's a, what else is it? That's, That's why we, I would use that to load in, in when competing. So yeah. when I told you guys, I would push sodium levels up high. And then when I would cut down to, you know, quote unquote low, it would be good, still healthy range because I had pushed the sodium so mm. high. One of the ways I do that would be adding these, those two large dill pickles a day. It was like, wow. a, and when you're on a diet and you're eating all whole foods, it's nice to get like something that actually I'm eating this versus yeah, just drinking. You know? That's right. All right. So, uh, did you guys see the new world record for an equipped bench press? Did you guys see this? I got to send this to Doug. So equipped. Can, so, so equipped they're is able like to wear the bench shirt. Yeah. The, so it's bench shirt. 
Um, I think it's unlimited. The meaning, record was around a thousand pounds before, right? Well, so I think it's unlimited, meaning um, you could wear you know two bench shirts or I, 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 I'm not quite sure. But did you guys see what I'm the number like, is? Kind of like why? Pull like, it up on the. I just well, the record it. used to be like a thousand, right? Somewhere around there. I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. I think I think you're around a thousand. This is this is insane. Look at this this the, the number of this guy's uh, bench presses. Doug oh pulls it up. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I already see it. You, yeah, you see what? He, yeah. So, uh, and I want to show you guys because let's talk about the what he's using the the bench shirt and how big of a of a difference it's making. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Okay, a fourteen hundred pound bench press. Oh, Jesus Christ, bro! Fourteen hundred pound bench press. Now he's he's equipped, meaning he's wearing a bench shirt and all that stuff. And you can see if you watch the video, oh my god, how he's having to stand can't, because yeah, the bench like, shirt has got his arms stuck in this <laughs> position. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, how can we even get that shirt off? Yeah, uh, but crazy. I, like okay, so. Uh, how familiar are you with, with guys with bench shirts and, and, and equipment? How much they can help you lift? Oh, huge. Yeah. Huge. And so, either. yeah, but okay. So, how much is it going to lift for him? 300 pounds? Oh, no. It's not that pounds? huge of a difference. No, no, it is. 300 pounds oh. or an extra pound oh. by wearing a bench shirt. Do you know that some lifters? I knew it was like it probably 100. Do you know that sometimes least, power I lifters it was like will 50 to 100? No. Wow, no. Not no. much, huh? The, yeah, when they wear these crazy ones where it's unlimited. Do you know that some of these some of these guys will get under the bar to bench wearing a bench shirt for the first time and can't get the bar to their chest? Uh, well, yeah. he, he didn't get it to his chest right there. He did. No, he didn't. Yeah, just watched the video. No, no, he touched his chest. No, he didn't. He did not touch it. That's was, why that, I, was that? that no. that was an official lift. Well, I mean, he didn't touch his chest. Uh, the, I just watched. Oh, it. Oh, is this just a fun lift? Yes, bro. Watch. Mm. He 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 drops it down, and it does not get all the way to his chest. Let's watch see. the bar. I was uh, watching it while I you were talking. I think he barely touches it. No, no, no. no. Watch, 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 watch. He's built the bench. Watching, 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 yeah, watching. I know. Right? No touch. No touch. <laughs> no touch. Just certain no, guys, as you know. I just watched it. Yeah. Not right, hold on, hold on. Their arms are just this long. Yeah. Doug has the best view. Watch real like closely, Doug. Barrel. It does not get to his chest. Gets close. No, I think he touches, dude. No. Here we go. Down. Watch. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I mean, he's, he gets lift watch, off. Watch, 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 watch. Doesn't touch, doesn't touch, doesn't touch, doesn't touch. Is that touching right Never there? touched. No. There's a gap. That looks like a gap. Did it? Yes. Yeah. I just watched it. Oh, well, that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that highlights your point, though, that it was probably so tight that was as yeah. far down as it was going to go. Yeah, I think they can. I'm, uh, yeah, you're looking at a, but even if it added 400 pounds, 500 pounds, holy cow. I mean, yeah, nonetheless, yeah. it's still, I mean, that would rip my shoulders off just to grab So that I've that. read articles with some of these guys where they lift just in just ungodly weight yeah. and they describe what it feels like. And it, they say it feels like your bones. Oh, yeah, I just want to break. Yeah. Like where you're holding the weight and you feel like your bones are bending yeah. from the mm. just the weight that's on. Isn't that Ugh. crazy? Right. That yeah. is insane. Any potential weakness. I mean, that could be super disastrous. But I, now I do want to say this. When you look at world champion bench pressers, okay, just to kind of highlight how less of a functional exercise a bench press is over a squat and deadlift. Yeah. Look at the kind of leverage that produces that weight in, in the sense of how the guy's built. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look. Big like, barrel chest yeah, look, like that. Like, yeah. He's not much you can do but bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what you do all day long. That's about it. Is you just <laughs> bench press, you know. Oh Throw a baseball. Uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, you know, you can't do much. Yeah, it's not. Uh, um, I just, um, very athletic. On that on that path, uh, there was an article that was written on strength training for hypertrophy versus strength. It was actually a meta analysis on strength training for strength versus strength training for hypertrophy. So the title, it's a systematic review. It's resistance training prescription for muscle strength and hypertrophy. Um, and, the, and it's to try to see what the difference is. How do you strength train for strength versus how do you strength train for hypertrophy? And what are the what's the main factor that that decides whether or not you get more strength versus more hypertrophy, vice versa? And what they found is first off, this is the conclusion: all essentially all prescriptions, in other words, all studies with strength training promoted strength and hypertrophy compared to no exercise. Duh. Right, right. The highest ranked prescriptions for strength involved higher loads. Right. Okay, obvious. Whereas the highest ranked prescriptions for hypertrophy included multiple sets. So it's more about a volume for hypertrophy for sure. and more about load yeah. for strength, which kind of, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. it makes perfect sense. Your one sense, rep right? max 
versus your, you know, superset body pump, yeah, you know, yeah. like type of exercises for yeah. sure. I mean, I, I even, I wish we had a way to, to measure or There's study. too much crossover though, right? There's yeah. So much, yeah. Because I, I mean, I remember, and we've talked about this several times on the show, there's, there's definitely a very clear difference uh, when I had built a physique around like primarily training for hypertrophy. So lots oh, of supersets. Yeah. yeah. Versus lifting really heavy. I avoided that for most of my, my lifting career and was this hypertrophy bodybuilder type of routine. Rarely ever lifted below five reps. Rarely ever. I mean, I used to talk to people like, why would I max out? I don't want, no, why would I ever like people? What's your max? I don't know what my max is. I never max out. Like it didn't do that for years. What was your line when I'm, when I'm yeah. with a girl? Yeah. Yeah. I take my no, shirt off. Yeah. Those girls ever asked me how to bench press. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Have they ever asked you that when you take your shirt off? No. Twice. So it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> so times. honestly, like that was like my philosophy. Now, what, what was cool about that was that I made that shift to training more strength and I could see such a dramatic shift yeah. in my in my physique, and it's a different look. You get a different look. It's from a it. different look and a different feel for me. Um, I prefer the feel and look I get from strength training, from heavy strength training, than I get from uh, like bodybuilding style training. Uh, now it's not as um, it's not as forgiving on my joints and all that stuff. So as I get older, I, I have to do less of it. Yeah. But the feel I have. I'd rather not have as much like fullness, but it makes me feel like hard. Like my body feels so solid and hard. I like the way that feels versus the, yeah, the body way more powerful. That's yeah. just the thing. It's like, um, but it's not as sustainable. There's no way like longevity wise. No. I, I, you have to supplement with hypertrophy training and, uh, consider just like what kind of wear and tear that's going to put on the joints. Is, it, so it in, just adds up in quick. a perfect world. So if I could go back and do it all over again, like my journey, I would have been a strength focused person First, early yeah. and then become bodybuilder guy afterwards. Yep, yep. Yeah. Cause that would have laid the foundation. What right. I recognize with the, the heavy lifting and it's kind of to the point you're making is that even when I wasn't aired up, I, I looked muscular. My problem in my early twenties when I was hypertrophy training all the time, I look good aired up yeah, in the gym. Yeah. I'd have this bubbly bodybuilder kind of look. And then two hours later, I would feel Flat. like I deflate yeah. and I would look, <laughs> I did, I wouldn't look that muscular where when I started getting stronger and lifting heavier load, right. And training more like a power lifter, I, I didn't look as bubbly and impressive in the gym, but the muscle that I did build seemed to stay on me. Yeah. All, it felt like it was there all day long. And right. I, I looked more muscular even when I wasn't aired yeah. up. So the challenge, and just to be clear, the challenge with heavy strength training is not that it's heavy strength training. It's that at some point when you push your body to hitting higher and higher numbers, the risk versus reward ratio starts to become unfavorable. So mm -hmm. like if you're just getting started and you're 45 years old, you're 55 years old, so long as you have good form, you should focus on strength. Everybody should focus on good strength. Of course, the caveat being good form, good mobility, like appropriate, okay? If you've been training for 10 years and you've got really good, impressive lifts for someone like yourself, then it, it you know, in other words, me adding 10 more pounds to my deadlift, the, the risk that I'm gonna take doing that is not even close to worth any reward yeah, I get you from get very, barely anything from it because you've already even if I added fifty pounds to my lead, yeah. it, it, it wouldn't. You've already maxed out most of your potential. It's not going to give me that yeah. much, yeah. and the risk that I that I you know embark on going for that pursuit is just it's just silly. By right? the way, I also think that this is what, uh, the case that this you know movement in our space makes for the. You know, oh, you don't need to do squatting and deadlifting right. and so like that. It's because they use those extreme examples. That's exactly. Yeah. And 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 they're coming from yeah. a place where they trained that way for already decades of their life. And so it's like, oh yeah, okay, well that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You've you've built a solid foundation on those principles, on those lifts. You've now learned as you've gotten older that oh, the, the now the reward isn't quite there that it was when I was 20 yeah. and first getting into this lift or lifting like this. So now it is probably more beneficial to do a lot of this you know, unilateral work, dumbbell work, yeah. more pumping bodybuilder type routines. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And, and I mean, like even now with my training now, and I still look, this is again, it's a work in progress because I love the feeling of lifting heavy. I love uh, the challenge. It's just, uh, this is, it's an ego thing. Okay. So I, I totally get it. Uh, and I still struggle with it because I still like to train this way. I still like to lift heavy load. But I know that there's nagging stuff that I've probably, well, I've definitely caused that is just going to keep getting worse. Like I have like my left 
hip and my left ankle and I have a little shoulder stuff that pops up and it's like, okay, you know, should I keep working out this way? I wish I could train myself the way I would train someone else uh, sometimes. Yeah, but it's just, know, right? it's just, I enjoy it. But again, if, if you're just getting started, going to get stronger is your best bet, period, end of story. Yeah. It's when you finally do get really strong that the risk uh, you know, versus reward ratio starts to be messed up, in which case then bodybuilding. So you know, if yeah. someone were to say, well, how are you going to train for the rest of your life, Sal? Uh, or what I, my answer would be, well, ideally, it's going to look like a combination of mobility and bodybuilding right. with very little heavy strength. You right? want to build that base, that foundation of like real strength to pull from, but like to sustain that long term, you're going to have to supplement that with like these other uh, methods, especially hypertrophy training yeah. to, to make, because it's less risky on the joints. Yes. What's cool though is like what I would consider moderate to light strength training today would be my heaviest in my early oh, 20s. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what's great about it. So it's all still lifting. It's I mean, all relative. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. you know, like- It's a, like, okay, a, I'm not deadlifting a, 500 pounds, but I'm pulling three- Or like, like a, a light day of squatting is moving 225 for me now. Well, well, that was like, I couldn't even max that yeah. in my, my mid-20s, right? So yeah. it's all relative to where where you, what the, from laying that foundation, like of where you're totally. currently at. Like that's totally. low risk for me. All right, so I got I got a statistic I wanted to show you guys. I have some stats too. And I, okay, but this one's interesting. This yeah, is, mine's out of fitness. I don't have so any wait. stats. This though. one's out of fitness. This is not. <laughs> this is non-fitness. Too. The other guy. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> this we one, already covered what I wanted to cover. The very beginning. I'm gonna tune out. I'm gonna go get a sandwich. I'll see you guys later. No, no, you guys. Oh, what you got, Sal? Listen, this is wild and i i thought a lot about this and i came up with some of my own theories completely invented okay, <laughs> okay. i'd love your guys speculation though <laughs> let's hear it all right so here's the data so these are two charts doug i'm going to send these to you uh so that you can maybe put them up on the uh, on the screen there for everybody but there's two charts this is these are the political preferences of 12th graders today versus how they were all the way back uh, as far as 1975. Oh, okay, wow. so political identities. Oh, this now that no no go back to the, the other one, Doug. You kind of ruined everything, but whatever. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> you just yeah. you gave us the yeah, answers yeah, we to the test. Know, Jesus Christ, we know where this God, is going. Yeah, Doug. okay. So scroll, yeah. Doug. Go to the first picture that I sent. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the graph could mean you know. Okay, now scroll. No, no, that was it. Okay, okay so look. This is the political identities of 12th grade boys. Now, maybe if you could scroll down, Doug, so they could see the years. Yeah, hmm. what is that? Okay, so 1975, oh, okay. all the way on the left, and then right around 2016-ish, this huge, insane split that we've never seen before, or we haven't seen s since this graph was, uh, you know, wow, since they started tracking. Wow, this is, this is now. now. Wow, interesting. 12th grade 12th boys. grade boys. Radically shifted to becoming far more conservative and far less liberal. Yeah. So a major well, so you're looking at now what this obviously isn't showing is that a majority of boys are somewhere in the middle. But the ones that identify liberal and conservative, huge drop and now it's almost it's down to like 12% identify as liberal oh, and no it's as high as what is that 23 23ish 20, percent, 24% that identify as conservative. So 12th well, grade boys where's today. Where's the benefit for, for boys to it, identify that? Well, way? I mean, I actually well, don't, hold on, I don't not, think this is surprising at well, all. Well, not yet. Not yet. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, not yet. Because okay, now yeah, I'm going to yeah. show you the next graph. Okay. The next one is 12th grade girls. They had an equally impressive split in the opposite, opposite. Yep. direction. Of course. I, I think this is Look all at this. Could, is. Girls identifying as conservative went down. Didn't go down massively where they've been historically, but becoming <laughs> liberal or identifying as liberal exploded. For 12th grade girls. So 12th grade girls went through the roof of becoming more liberal and 12th grade boys it's went the, the opposite direction. The, the messaging from both parties completely oppositely appeals to, to the different gender. So yeah. now, well, so, okay, so let's, let's talk about that. So yeah. when I look at the messaging towards kids, it all is liberal. There's very little conservative messaging towards kids. Yeah, it's all right. liberal. And I think- and Boys I are think more likely to, to push back. I don't think it's more likely guys are more likely to push back as much as it is that messaging resonates more with women than it resonates with men. Yeah. It's well, about being sensitive. It's about, it's like it just, it isn't about conquering, winning. Like it's not about that. It's about everybody wins and we should, 
we should all love each other and be yeah, more that doesn't resonate more with more boys. feminine energy is yeah. coming from the messaging and so and of course so of course a lot of women are gonna be like yeah I like that yeah I, I like the mm -hmm. sounds and some guys would be like oh I don't know that sounds kind of weak to well me. I don't I know if that's my I was thinking about it so that's part of it that I was thinking the other part of it is a lot of the messaging especially since with this started which is right around 2015 2016 that's when it started to become this whole like being masculine is toxic. Yeah. Patriarchy being male is, is bad. evil. Patriarchy yeah. is is you know yeah. men are the reason why we have all these problems. Um, that you know men are bad. This and stuff. And and that has made boys go in the opposite direction. Of it's, course, that's what I, think. It, I mean, ugh, you know, so obvious. Yeah. Now, now, what does this mean for like dating? <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, yeah. You're like, what's going to happen? You know well, what I think going to happen? Well, There's going to be a lot of dudes that are going to lie. The positive part, yeah. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. A lot, a lot of cuttlefish out there <laughs> yeah. Yeah. coming in. I mean, the positive yeah. part, though, you still said that probably a majority still would identify in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really the only extreme. Totally. We're looking at the extreme yeah. ends here. Yeah. So most people are going to probably be fine with with dating because I think most people would are are more in the middle. And yeah. like, although there are some people that are like, I would never date this opposite now, political view. Now, here's my other, the other... Thing. And although this didn't really happen in 2016, because that's when we see this huge divergence, but kids are just more aware of political shit now because everything's so political. Yeah. You know, when we were when you were in high school, did you ever think about politics at Never. all? Never. No, Never. I, I think it, I think I think a real easy explanation is that the that has become way more popular to kids, like to the, the yeah. hearing about that stuff with social media and everything. And the messaging and, I think not and the, the messaging from the liberal side has more feminine energy around it, and the messaging around the conservative side has more masculine yeah. energy around it. Therefore, it attracts those now, two the, sexes. Some other people have because I've been reading on this, this is coming out; it's making its waves, right? And I've been reading people's commentary on it, and there's some other interesting things that we we need to consider as well. Uh, boys in this age, now both boys and girls in this age group are rebellious. It's a rebellious stage, right. okay? But guys are the more, if they're going to be more rebellious against, if anyone's going to be more rebellious against what's going on, it's going to be young men. Mm -hmm. Young men are the more like kind of wild card. Defiant. Whereas uh, girls also in this age group tend to be rebellious, everybody does, but they're more likely to conform and to kind of go along with what everybody else is doing. And this this is because girls are far more sensitive to to being just socially aware, yeah. social cues. It's not a bad thing, by the way. Like, we, you need this, right? Like, for, for example, there's this famous study where they just show eyes, mm. and you have to guess a person's uh, emotion, mm -hmm. and guys are terrible at it, and girls crush it because yeah. we just don't read shit naturally like women do. It's a skill, but the the part of the weakness of that is you're more susceptible to like social contagions Group and thought, stuff like that. So. Yeah, so like when yeah. you watch uh, old rock video, like old Which rock you concerts. Have to explain, you have to explain evolutionary why that was uh, advantageous. They were right? the, because they, they, girl, women the built the village. That's right. Yes, right. men built society, so women built the village. So it was important That's that right. you, you helped keep the village together and the same ideology and, and work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it makes sense that the, they would be better at conforming with the group and getting everybody on the same page versus being defiant and being like, no, I'm going to well, be different. I don't yeah, want so Not, both, both need each other. Correct. Right? And that's the, the, the real frustrating part of this whole thing. It's like, yep. we're different, you know, yeah. like, but also we need each other. So we have to figure out how to make it that's work. The balance. Yeah. Because if you're too, the weakness with the male side is you're not reading People, you don't care. The empathy isn't there, and it becomes really about uh, you know conquer and uh, create and you know achieve or push this goal, and it becomes insensitive and all that stuff. The weakness with the the feminine side is the social contagion aspect of it. Like mm -hmm. you ever watch like rock concerts in the past, and you see the girls in the audience, and they all scream and pass out, and they'd all freak out together. That's yeah. social contagion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's literally, and all of us have experienced this at a concert. You get caught up in the energy, yeah. but usually dudes aren't like passing out and freaking out. Yeah. It's the girls that tend to. <laughs> Did you watch, I was just watched the uh, Elvis again. A great movie, by the way, I was watching yeah. the plane back and they showed like the first time he did any kind of like gyration with yeah. his hip. And then like, these Girl. women didn't <laughs> yeah. know what was happening. Like it's just, they <laughs> they just started to kind of like get a twitch and then all of a sudden, ah, it's yeah. like, like losing it and screaming. And it's like, like to me, it's so interesting and, and bizarre yeah. to me. By the way. Oh, that is. Yeah. I don't think that's bizarre at all. I think that we were, we were so collectively conservative with yeah. everything. Right. And like you just close was conservative messaging was like, there was a, it was a different time back then. 
And that, that in that time, that would be like us being teenage boys and a girl walking out naked and shaking her tits out in front of all of us. Like, and, no. and never have seen them. That's how. No. Yes. No, 100%. No, no, no. no, no yes. No. Only, guy, only no, on that dude. level, I would say. Because I was just thinking of guys like comparing to out. Comparing on, to now's bro. time. That would not be that weird in a long No, it would, all the guys in the audience would act very different. They'd be very quiet and creepy. It wouldn't be like, yeah. Ah, they would just stop. Talk, they'd oh. be talking in a conversation. They'd be, be like, like oh. oh, and it'd be very uncomfortable. Yeah, they would be totally stone different. cold yeah. frozen. Okay, and I'm not saying that the guys would react the same as the girls. I'm saying that the reaction that the girls had is strong. Is, is yeah, yeah, is, yeah. The, is is normal to that. Like because of like how <laughs> out outrageous that was back then and how yeah. sexual that yeah, was. Like true. now that's like not sexual at all. It's like yeah, everybody yeah. dances like that. And it's very, but to the, that's what I agree that gave the analogy. If that's like someone yeah. walking on stage and just be naked and starting to be like, Whoa, like yeah. it would blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the way, that's, by the way, I, just to balance this out, every men can be also uh, susceptible to social contagions and it tends to with men look like uh, riots and violence. Mm -hmm. And this is where you get that mob, kind of mentality right so it can be in, in a different direction <laughs> not a great one well this isn't way. this isn't the same thing but it's somewhat similar so there was this study uh conducted where um it was a facial dis disfigurement um basically they're looking to see if there's discrimination in the workplace right and so they basically took a group of women and oh, with this. with uh, makeup, and then they put like scars on their face with the makeup. The f on the women. On the women. Okay. On the women, and they were going to go in for a job interview. Yeah. And so they were supposed to write notes and see like if they noticed any kind of like actual discrimination like based the, on like how they were perceiving like uh, this person interviewing them and what kind of cues they were getting. Oh, from can them we speculate? Whatnot. Yeah. So, wait, but I'll okay. You, you want to speculate before well, I tell you what happened? Well, don't tell no, me the well, answer. You hear, you yeah, hear, I don't, don't want to hear the answer. I want to. Well, I got to. Okay, the last bit of okay, the information. Okay, okay. So, don't give us the answer. No. So, um, they they were going they were going to go um, into these interviews, but they first stopped them. Oh, I need to do one last minute touch up on your makeup. And so what they did is they they did the touch up, but they actually took the scar off. So oh, the women so they had know. no scar. So they the women they didn't know. thought the they scar thought the was scar there. Was still oh, there. interesting. And then they had to report if they felt discriminated against. Interesting. So now, now, now what do you think happened? Oh, that's a great. Okay, so I totally think that the, the women acted different because they were insecure and believed they had the scar on there, and therefore they felt like they were being discriminated against. That's exactly true. Exactly what happened. Of yeah. course. Like 100%. Because, wow. they, then they, and it was wow. like an excess of discrimination, like like. Full detail. Because they, Which, well, okay, you're looking for it, or yes. you think you perceive it. That's right. That and way. what that also highlights, too, the power of just Victim. having self-confidence, too. Like, let's say you did have a scar, but you're confident as fuck. I don't give a fuck. I own it. Right. I'm, I am who I am. Or, you know or how about in the reverse, the victim mentality that's, that well, often yeah. gets promoted. Well, that's what that, that where highlights you, that. Where you, that you are a victim. How and, and powerful now, is that? Now, every encounter, every encounter, all of society, every commercial, it's every advertisement is, oh, my God, they're- it's against me. Yeah. It's because of this. Yeah, it's yeah. because of who I am or what I worship or who I have sex with or whatever. Now it becomes that. Just goes to show you, you know, when you have this perception, you see what you want to see essentially, or you perceive things in a different way. I mean, it's the power of the mind. I mean, that's totally. uh, that I've, I've talked about the book, uh, how emotions are made. It gets into that. And I think that's a really powerful thing for people to understand that we all are susceptible to that. If you've seen something and you it, as a pattern in in your life, it's very hard. Whether it's, it's hard to break, that, yeah, it's yeah. hard to break that pattern. It's a it's a it's the default pattern in your brain, and so being able to catch yourself in those moments and being like, is this logical? Just yeah. because I've seen that three out of four times, does guess, that mean that's for sure what's going on here? Like that's why I th you know it's just it's so frustrating is if you see the same messaging continuously and it's like we haven't tried the, the opposite approach. You know, to me, it's just like if we're if we're just going to keep messaging all the wrong. Wrong and and all the the negative like that's literally all we're gonna see and we're gonna stay here. Yeah, right? it's like remember who's that speaker? I can't remember his name. He was uh, he's horribly disfigured from a fire when he was a kid. Remember he was oh, speaking oh, yeah, yeah. John. Um, uh, I forgot his name. O'Leary. Yeah. 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 yeah, and he talked about how his mom had a freaking piano. He lost his fingers. He's gonna learn how to play the piano, but his mom essentially like taught him like life's gonna be hard. So what? You yeah. got this issue. You yeah, got to yeah. move forward, and it transformed him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You imagine if she treated him. Yeah, like poor kid. We got to do everything for you, which no. I would understand too. You, you know, the kid was covered in burns, but that would have that would have made things. Well, so that's much what worse. makes that story so powerful. If there was anybody who would get a pass for acting that way, right? Exactly, like being a victim exactly. would be someone like that. Yeah, but because they chose the opposite yeah. path, and look how much that ended up. Really Along with. those lines, uh, I saw this on social media. This woman, <laughs> by the way, I know social media amplifies crazy stuff precisely because it's crazy. 
So I'm starting to, starting to kind of realize this is not like perhaps as big of a it's deal. It's not reality. Yeah, but anyway, there's this, this woman and she's uh, obese. And she says, obese people aren't fat. They're bodybuilders. Just oh, like, I saw that clip that's going viral. Just like bodybuilders. I saw it. They should, clip. they should be celebrated the same way because yeah. they're building their bodies. Technically, she's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Technically. Here's why. Well, no, then, then, she, then she went on to say why uh, why they're not why they're not celebrated. And it's because we're fat phobic. We're fat phobic yeah. and so like No, that. no, no. Here's why. <laughs> here's why. It's easy to get fat. Okay. It's hard to get muscular. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it all. It doesn't take it's like a, hard work. Yeah, I don't yeah. look at a like so you know, nobody looks at someone's obese like, man, you really put in <laughs> you put in some hard God, work to man, get like that's that. That's impressive. You know, everyone's <laughs> like, Yeah, you didn't do anything. That's what happened. <laughs> that's why it's that way. So that's I what, totally think stuff like that that go, it goes viral just because it's outlandish. I don't think that's how it's, most people think. I, I think it's it's, it's so like, ridiculous. Like I, I have some move. stats and numbers for you. I've been yeah, I've been wanting uh we've been on vacation and so we haven't had a chance to talk and we'll just do it on air because we haven't done an off air i have been curious sal especially you because i know you you're more into the economy stuff uh -oh. what you think about one the fed raising the rates yeah. again uh two like your thoughts on what's happening currently in the housing market and where we're going and stuff like that and then i'll read you guys some stats so so what are your thoughts uh they're saying economy still doing it looks like it's recovering it's doing great let's raise rates a little bit but i keep reading about layoffs i keep hearing about uh, companies that are kind of going bankrupt and stuff like that. So I don't know if this is spin. It feels kind of like uh, spin to me. Housing market's interesting because the last time I looked, uh, the, uh, it was a sizable percentage of people who owned their homes and they had such low interest rates. Oh, so loans. I have those stats for you. Okay, it that's makes no sense for them to... to so, th so this is the part that's... Real, this is what's, We're not going to leave, basically. This is what's propping the housing market up right now. So we've been in a, a housing sh shortage for like a decade now. Right. And this last year still is like that. So most places are, you know, 50% less of what they normally have. And so you, it's just supply and demand, basically. Right. We don't have a lot of supply. Therefore, the, the low the low supply is still keeping the housing market afloat because there is still, a, even though it's a small demand, with that small of a supply, it's keeping sure. the, the house prices propped up. Now, granted, there have been areas where we've seen a dip. We've seen a dip out in the, the, the Truckee place. I think we lost 20% in the last, you know, year, year and a half on that property, but that property gained you know, 150% in the previous. So it's like still way, way above sure. where it was, right? So you're seeing this in some areas. Some areas you're still seeing it, it going up. And the stats that you're alluding to is why we are not going to see this big crash. Because in order for the big crash, we'd have to see a massive flood of inventory come in. Yeah, a bunch in of a, houses for sale. Yeah, in addition to the inability to buy and stuff like that, it's yeah. like there's a lower demand, and in addition to that, we have a huge amount of supply. Yeah, boom, pr prices crash. And so then you see a huge crash like that. And so listen to this stat. That's, I think it's really crazy. So right now, like- Was you, it like 61%? Where it's, it's crazy. Okay. That. Okay, so if you were to go buy right now on a 30-year fix with good credit, you're looking at like 7.5% interest. That's what the interest rates are with good, really good credit, yeah. right? So right now, they're 92%. Okay, of Americans have a mortgage below 6%. Yeah. Ninety two percent. Yeah. Wow. Below six. Sixty one percent are below four percent. percent. That's the number. That's three point something. We yeah. may never see that again. I no. don't think. Why would they sell why would they sell won't. their house? Yeah, why would you? If they and sell they could sell their house, go buy one for cheaper, pay the higher interest rate, and have a higher mortgage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why nobody's it's not gonna happen. And yeah. then twenty three percent have a mortgage below three percent. Yeah. Wow. So it's like you should show the numbers. Adam, on like a mortgage, like a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Do you have a calculator? Mortgage calculator? I don't have one on. Me. Oh, I think but I, I could probably one. give you an estimate. On I what think you're I asking. have. I think I have one here that we could we could. But what use. are you are you wanting to compare? Like if somebody had a five hundred thousand dollar house. So five hundred thousand dollar. I'm gonna try this. And then go to upgrade their house and then get into a different loan. Is that yeah, what you're trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. No. You would. It's it's so five hundred thousand dollar. Let's see. Five hundred thousand dollar loan, thirty year, at seven point five percent. Right. That means your monthly payment is going to be thirty four hundred, about almost thirty five hundred dollars. Okay, so that's yeah. not including taxes. Yeah, that's just your mortgage. A four hundred thousand dollar loan, so a hundred thousand dollar difference. At what did it say? Was most people were at below what? Below four percent? No, below six percent. Or below six percent? So yeah. what would what, what say you five think? five say, yeah. five percent? Okay, four hundred thousand oh, dollar. Sorry, I saw, I got to make up more. Six hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollar difference. A six hundred thousand dollar home, a hundred thousand dollars more 
at a five percent interest rate for thirty years, monthly payment thirty two hundred bucks. Yeah. So like, why would you? Why would you leave? Buy another house. No. Right. The only people that are potentially leaving right now are people that have been in their home for 20, 30 years and they're downsizing because their family's all moved out of it. And so they sell yeah. their $3 million mansion and they downsize into a nice million dollar condo. Yeah. That's like the only people but that literally, are literally, what I just are showed you, like you're going to spend $200 more a month yeah. on a $100,000 cheaper house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. $100,000 cheaper, you're still going to pay $200 more a month. And your and you're property not gonna taxes are going to be higher. You're not going to do that because of the taxes are percentage of your of your yeah, of the value that. of the house. So that's going to keep it up. So the question becomes: Does do we move it back? Do, does it? And of course, every realtor likes to say this, right? So they're going to keep of, going. They're going to scale it back. To yeah, a lot, a, lot, a lot of realtors are be like, "Oh, this is the, you know, they're just going to peak out, and then it's going to slow down things, and then when we and when we correct, then we're going to start seeing now, interest if, rates drop back." Now, down. why would they say that? Because it encourages people to buy houses yeah. at seven and a half percent, anticipating <laughs> that the rates will go down. So they and they refi, re 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 yeah. But, so that's yeah. exactly what like realtors are pitching right now. But it's a it's a really yeah. interesting time yeah. in real estate. I really so the the forty year mortgage is being is being pitched like crazy now too so that's like a big push is to move into the the 40-year mortgage are people just basically saying i'm gonna buy this house and i'll just pay make payments for us i actually yeah basically. so i don't i i really think this is okay the what what was what's the famous saying that was said at the one whatchamacallit meeting or the, you'll oh, the be world economic forum yeah that, you'll that, be renters you'll, yeah, oh you'll, yeah, own, you'll nothing, own nothing and you'll be happy and you'll be happy right yeah. so i actually think that which sounds like sounded so crazy back when we first heard it like no way that's not gonna happen this is the way that I think we're transitioning people. Uh -huh. It's like they don't even realize yeah. that they're becoming lifelong renters just and payment, not because you forever. really don't own it. At the end of the day, first of all, even you when, you own, property property property. when you own your house, the, 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 the property taxes, the state owns the goddamn property. And until you actually pay the loan off with the, the, yeah. the, the bank, the bank owns the house. And so for 30 years, it's really not your house at all. And then even when it is your house, you still don't own the damn land. So it's like, yeah. we're already in that. And now this is going to extend it 10 more years. So it's a 40 year mortgage. I think it's just moving in that transition of we're going to become renters, whether we like it or not. So you're either going to be in 40, 45 year loans, or you just choose to, by rent. the way, just to do the math. Cause my, so my family's here when it comes to money that you know, my, my parents grew up poor, their parents grew up dirt poor. And they're always like, buy a house. Like, you, you got to buy a house that you live in. Like, why, why don't you buy a house that you live in? And I try to explain to them. It's like, listen, if I have X amount of dollars, especially here in the Bay Area, where a, a average house in the Bay Area or in San Jose it's will cost you 1.2, you probably 1.3. I'm talking about a normal four-bedroom, three, four-bedroom house, okay? I try to explain to them. I say, look, the amount of money you put down on a house like that to be able to get it, I could buy property somewhere else. I could make income on the rent because the rent will be more than the mortgage. And then I can rent here, have a house and just pay rent. And that's better use of my money. And my parents are like, well, what about the value? And this and that. I said, well, if I live in it, there's nothing I can do with it unless I sell it and move again. So it really doesn't make any sense. And then I showed my parents, I said, look, here, here's, there's more to it. When you make interest payments, like you make, you, you have a seven and a half percent interest loan for 30 years on $500,000 or $600,000 or whatever, a million dollars. Bro, you pay so you much You know how much more. you pay just in interest? It's like hundreds of thousands of dollars or a million dollars that you that is gone, that you just yeah. paid in interest. Yep. So the reality is the old way of, you know, you buy your house uh, that you live in and that's the way you work things out. It doesn't work out that way in a lot of areas anymore. Most areas doesn't work out that way. No, I think, I, and that's why I think we are moving to this. I think we're at a time in our lives where it's just going to be different. It's not going to be the same that it was in our, our parents' generation. And more and more people are going to see that logic and go like, why am I buying? Or buy into the messages of, oh, just put a 40-year mortgage. And so now you're just mortgaging for 40 and your years. your grandkids will have it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, which which to me, that's even crazier because yeah. then you got 40 years committed. And at the end of that 40 years, you're going to pay 10 times the price of what that house was. I know. So just to say it was yours, it's like- it When you could have invested in other places, made income- and been smart. Totally. Yeah. So uh, anyway. super interesting like that. I think that we're in a really pivotal time. In Speaking of pivotal times, mm. boy, let me tell you, what a, what a wonderful time to be alive. I think this is when you know life is getting easy, is when competitions like this start popping up everywhere. I know, Justin, you want to talk about this. I actually looked this up myself. Okay. Have you heard of hobby horse competitions? 
Yeah. Hobby dude. horse competition. Yeah, maybe Doug. You I could. have been wanting to bring. Maybe this Doug, up. you can. <laughs> <laughs> you can Hobby horse it. competitions. Bro. So first of all, you've seen horse competition. Like people ride horses yeah, and then they yeah, jump yeah, over yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horse prances. You know what a hobby horse is? It's the rock, like a rocker, right? That's no. What okay, so it's like a stick. Like think there's about a horse head. This started with a mop. Yeah. It's a. There's the actual competitions. I don't know if there's a lot of dudes that do this, but there's definitely a lot of <laughs> girls that are out there and they're yeehaw and they're they're doing little um, they're jumping routines, over they're jumping, jumping over yeah just they're like prancing. they're on a horse. You know I blame the internet. The internet <laughs> yeah. the, because you know what? There's only in the entire world of billions of people. There's only about 500 weirdos that would want to do this, but we can, they can all meet look, on the look, internet. The, this is 2019. Bro, I, lo I love the it. Finish, I love weird people. Dude. Hey, the title it's of this favorite. is the Finnish Hobby Horse Championship. Finish. This is not the world. Guarantee. <laughs> hey, guarantee. We have at least one listener look that's this. in. Hey, this. hey, look, bro. Look, look. <laughs> oh, Shut hey, look. Up. That's the competition. Whoa! And hey, they did it in slow motion to yeah. show the. Athleticism. Yeah, the athleticism. Wow. What in the wow, world? Dude. You know, hey, look, there's worse things your daughter could do. Come on, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> How would you approach it if your kid was like, this is what I want to do? <laughs> I'm like, do you want a real horse? Just like, <laughs> no. Pretend to feed it, you know, like <laughs> yeah, in between. I mean, is, so is that most likely what this is, though? This is like the parents that are like, hey, listen, we can't afford a horse, but we can do this for you. Uh -huh. No. I feel like that's what this no, is. No, I think this I, is. Look, by the way, nobody's getting hurt. I, okay, fine. I get it. I'm into weird stuff, too, sometimes. But uh, I mean, there's actually a fan base. I mean, look at that. There's I a mean, crowd. I, yeah. I, I think it's just. Maybe we're weird. Mm, maybe I think <laughs> this again. This goes back to the whole play thing, right? That uh, uh, four-year-old uh, cut off. You know? <laughs> yeah, they miss. I think good they point, missed Justin. their window, dude. Good, of, good uh, point, you know, play with their hobby horse, and so now they're like reliving it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my god, what a, what a girls. good point, Justin. That, uh, uh, hey, uh, listen, you know, okay. By the way, people, what happens when these kids are playing iPads uh, between bro, three and five? This is right like here. when you have a, a girlfriend. I don't know if this happened to you guys or whatever growing up, and you go over to her house, and then she has literally like every stuffed animal or like Disney like character like all over the bed yeah. like all the posters and you're just like yikes yeah. <laughs> and you run how old were you when this happened you're 25 I was like 12 okay that's different that's fine yeah, yeah. I, I've heard stories where like dude but like, yeah. they're like 20 yeah exactly look at my stuffed animal you know? yeah, yeah that still happens Ooh. later on it's a little I, I think this is just evidence that life has gotten so amazingly easy you know what I mean that we could create competitions sure around just made up stuff yeah, you know that's that's what I think. I right. actually think that Justin's more spot on. I think that's a really good call on the the whole like because I brought up that Jordan Peterson thing of the the two to four year old like so important because that's a that's the age of these these kids that are doing this right now. Okay, yeah, well it's just like imagination, and I love it. You know, like yeah. go for it, but yeah. uh, you know, but like, you normally grow out of it around five or six. Now, hey, there's adult versions of this maybe. So that, I showed this to my kid, and my kid is is a smart ass, like goes, a real well, horse. And he goes, well, last week you shared with me the world record uh, with the Rubik's Cube, and he thought it was cool. I'm like, well, I mean, I get, yeah, it is just weird. It is weird, too. <laughs> but did you guys see that? There was a kid yeah. who did he, the Rubik's Cube. He did it in like three seconds Two seconds. Something. Oh, two seconds. My bad. Did you pull that up, Doug? How World you, record Rubik's Cube. Do you, you watch his fingers. It's like, <laughs> boom, solved it. Yeah. In, in like now, now that I think is impressive. Actually, I watch. Yeah. See again. Like I watch all the weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I watch a little. Well, there's there's like a, the there's, a, there's a mathematical hand-eye coordination, real physical challenge to that. I well, mean, I mean, the girls were jumping over shit with the horses. <laughs> stop bro. it. That was a high. <laughs> that was a good <laughs> jump. Did you see it? <laughs> Stupid. Stop. I want to see you jump. There was that nothing high. athletic about that. Bro. Hey, <laughs> that was high, dude. Can you that jump over not, those bars? Holding holding a little horse. I think I can. Especially you do like a knee. Yeah. No, that was pretty good. Hey, if I can enter in your competition in place the first time I do it. It's well, not that impressive. Well, I could I get my ass kicked on the You Rubik's gotta go Cube. in the men's division. <laughs> <laughs> I don't imagine the men's division. Hey, watch this. How much how 3.1 second. And boom. Set. No, no, no. Right no, here. Not, it's so watch, watch. Oh, yeah, he just practicing. Watch. They lift it. It's mixed up. You gotta look at it. He looks at it first to, to figure out his algorithm. And then watch. And then he's like, and he sets it down, and then he goes. I think watch, that's how it works. Watch this; it's insane. Ready? He sets it down. Go. And go. <laughs> Time starts. He's done. Wow! Oh, so holy. that's impressive, dude. That's crazy impressive. That's very impressive. So okay, he obviously there's a formula. Yeah, there is a formula to to doing a Rubik's cube. Yeah, you know. Now look. I, now here's I'm the deal. Look at the kids here versus the kids in the other one. Just as dorky. They're all weird. Yeah. They're. they're yeah. That's yeah, all, but they're all weird. Uh, but this hey, is okay, hey, listen. This is my okay, kind of weird. Okay, way more application in real life. Thank really, you. what are you gonna do with this? 
Bro, the, the the mathematics, hand-eye coordination, and, and ability to do that. Okay, explain to me how. The, I, let's doing just the say it takes a little more skill. That's all. No, no, no. Okay, there's obviously a formula that he has to figure out mathematically before he does that. <laughs> Shit. The, oh, you're kidding me right hey, now? Really? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Really? Hold on. You know what it is? It's that that we're that is more our kind of weird. The other one is the kind of weird that we don't like. Let's be honest. Uh, all right, fine. If the hobby horse, okay, let me put it this way: if it was uh, if it was guys on right. hobby horses, fine. But they had, okay, imagine, but they were running into each other. Imagine those two being adults now. They walk into an interview and they have to share. Their, their skill. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're right. Okay? right? I mean, yeah, you're right. right? Easily, okay? easily, I seriously. can cosplay and be some hey, weirdo. Like, you know, both like, these people dress like walk into any job, name any job you want, <laughs> that could be and they me. say, "Tell us something." Hey, tell us about your special skills. Yeah, special skill or something. Impressive. And then she I can put. Then, I can do a Rubik's cube in less than four seconds right now if you put it on the table. Whoa. I can jump with my hobby horse over. <laughs> you pull out your phone. Yeah. Hey, let me show you when I won. Let me show you when I won the finish. Look at all my ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm a world. Oh, uh, well, you know I'm a world. Bro, champion. I don't care what your job is. You're gonna get laughed out on one of them, and the other yeah. one's like, "Wow, really? You can do a Rubik's cube in under four <laughs> seconds?" <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Right? Come on. I, I guess I, you're right. If I can choose different. one, it's different. But hey, she did jump high, bro. That's pretty. I mean, <laughs> Come on, again, hobby, hobby. So everybody's well, okay, hobbies so that are unique and weird, and no, no shaming. There, it's there's just some weird. There's just some, don't show there's some, I think there's no. some things that are uh, that are kind of funny or weird, like hobbies, but still take like a, a skill and craft. Like you ever, there's like a people that do the the little kid razor scooters, the, like crazy tricks and stuff like that. Like that's, <laughs> that's kind of funny to me when I see a grown ass man riding a My razor. Is the guy I, with the wheel. Okay. I see this I every day on the way to work. There's like some grown ass man riding a razor Bro. and I'm like, oh, you, I missed, those shoes. you missed the play between I two. I bought those shoes with the wheelie. Yeah, yeah. You did? Bro, I'm going to bust that shit. Wait, out. you actually bought them? Yeah. They're coming. <laughs> no there would be a video. Oh no. my god! Hey, oh my god. you imagine Justin doing trick. But I mean, on, my on, point. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Imagine Justin doing a trick on razor on razor scooter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no way, those things hurt. You ever like hit one of those? But, okay, that's just as weird like and silly. But it, but it's a skill, a craft. Like you had to work at it together. And it's like okay, it's someone that the hobby horse thing you just showed us right now. All joking aside, there was nothing. When we're done with this, you just put a stick between. When your we're legs. done with this, I'm gonna set the bar. And I want you to jump over it, but you got to put your legs aside like they did. See if you I can, can do, do that. All I right. know I can do that. All right, we'll see about that. We're going to even spin, that. too. I do okay. <laughs> I'll give you a 180. I'll do it with a 180 in there. First try. Okay. First try. Right. Can we all get horses made, <laughs> Yeah, but can you prance and like yeah. gallop? Yeah, yeah. You wow, know what I mean? That was, not that was great. Well, no, first you got to let the horse would come up. Yeah, check out what he's got. What's up? Hello, where's everybody now? <laughs> There you go. And I'm going to double see everybody up a 180. Hold on. Go ahead, Al. Show, show the team here what you got. He's training for the oh, Hobby Horse competition. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You just got dog tail points. I thought you were a professional. Hey, that's not very high, dude. Those girls are going way higher. <laughs> I don't know. I have a lot more respect for those girls. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's change directions real quick. Doug's shaking his head. Uh, Adam, did you finally try the chocolate? I oh, did. All right. Now, chocolate hold on. donuts. Hope. Chocolate donuts. Did I? Hey, was I exaggerating? No, it's good. Oh, it's good. And thank it goes, you. And more importantly, it goes down really smooth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I told you. It's almost like- You never believe me because I oversell so many things. You do oversell things. I know. <laughs> you That's do. my fault. Especially with supplements. I'm always I like, uh, hell But this is legit. No, it was really Is good. it not the best? It's crazy how no, good it it's tastes. Good. it's good. It's actually like- What I haven't done with it, and I do want to try this now, is like, because I've told you before that if I, I, I do a certain amount of scoops of whey or overdo whey protein a day, it'll mess up my gut, is I want to see if I do like two or three scoops of that if it will go Bro, down. I, I'll crush. I've had 100 grams of protein from it. Oh, wow. And it In does, a sitting? No, 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 no. Oh, I'll day. do like 250 grams. I've oh, done okay. it before. Okay. And no problem on my gut. You give me any other protein and it's not good. Yeah. You do that. Yeah. yeah that's, so okay. it works so out pretty I'll well. I'll push that to see how that is. Awesome. Oh, hey, yeah. we got to give a shout out to our good friend, John Deloney. Yeah, his book dropped. Oh, yeah. Now, he this, this is a must read. He sent us a copy. I'm looking through it. The title of it is Building a Non-Anxious Life, and it's, it is absolutely invaluable. Like, if you're, if you're somebody that just kind of struggles with generally feeling uncomfortable or anxious, this is me, 
Um, it's like a, it's a game changer. It's phenomenal. I can't he, wait to have him on the show. So listen, in the mental health space, he's doing such a good job. Yeah. I love John. Wasn't this what his talk was kind of centered yeah. around? Yeah. So, and I know that hits you pretty hard, right? Like it it was, just it resonates with me because that's me. I, you know, I I generally feel uncomfortable in my own skin, and uh, and it's it's this is just it's it's so powerful, and so many people deal with that. So many people deal with that and don't even realize it. Yeah. They don't even realize it in, until you start taking away their their distractions. And it's like, well, I got to sit here quietly. I can't do that. Um, well, it's because you're probably anxious. So yeah, yeah. anyway, good stuff. John Deloney. And then what's his Instagram? Is it John? Is it at John Deloney? I think it is at John Deloney. I think so. Let me look it up. Yeah, go out and support. I mean, that's he's by far one of one yeah. of our favorite humans. Right, is it so John, John Deloney. D e l o n e y. No, no e actually. Oh, D e l o n y. Look, you're not what you eat, you're what you digest. If you're trying to eat a high-protein diet, if you're trying to fuel your workouts and find that you have gastro distress, gas, bloating, constipation, tummy issues, well, digestive enzymes can actually help. In fact, digestive enzymes are necessary to break those foods down into usable forms like amino acids so that your muscles and body can utilize them properly. Well, there's a company called Masszymes that makes digestive enzymes for fitness-minded individuals. Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Anthony from Alberta. What's happening, Anthony? How can we help you? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's you guys hey. <laughs> I was, part of me was expecting a nigerian prince <laughs> <laughs> sorry to no disappoint. way they picked my question yeah. <laughs> okay all right uh first off i just want to say i first started listening to you guys about five years ago for the fitness information and the laughs uh then throughout the years i became a father of two amazing girls and now more recently i became a church going man so the amount of value i get from you guys and your stories is really something i can't express enough Thank you. Awesome, awesome man. Yeah. All right, here's my question. A few months ago, I wanted to shed some extra love that I gained over the holidays. So I adjusted my calories to 2,000 a day. After about three weeks, well, more like exactly three weeks, <laughs> uh, I got to a leanness I was happy with, so I decided to start bulking. Every three weeks, I added 500 calories until I got to where I am now, where I am now, which is 4,000 calories and 250 grams of protein a day. I know you guys recommend about one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and obviously I am in excess of that quite a bit. So I was wondering if you guys think that the amount of protein I'm eating for a guy my size is too much. I am 30 years old, 170 pounds, and 5 foot 10. How do you feel? Like digestion-wise? How do you... Uh, yes, I feel really good. I'm paying a lot of attention to that, it's things like digestion and stuff like that. Uh, it is definitely dependent on quality of food. So obviously, so sometimes I'll work out at camp or out of town. My food choices, like, you know, I do the best with what I can, but sometimes it's just Boston pizza. Right. Uh, mm. Where when I'm in town, I can I have a lot more control of what I eat. And in those times, my digestion is a lot better, even though the protein is still the same. Where are you getting all your protein from? What, what is it all from like animal source or is it a lot of uh, like whey protein? Yeah, ninety nine percent of the time it's uh, animal source. I think in this, I've been doing four thousand calories for about nine weeks. I had one pro one time it was from a protein powder, uh, but other than that, it's animal source. I think you're, I think you're killing it. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me ask you this: This is a good question um, because uh, I want to get to the root of why you're asking this in the first place. What's making you ask us? And this may be less for you, Anthony, but more for other people watching right now. Okay, because you've already yeah. kind of answered it with the questions that you know Adam and Justin asked you, but. What made you ask this question in the first place about your protein being too high? What do you mean by that? Like, what are you worried about? Yeah. What was, what's the driver behind that? You got it. Good question. Um, so the reason I ask, honestly, so I am, like I said, I'm feeling pretty good. In my opinion, everything's going really good. I've, this is the best I've ever been fitness wise. So everything's going great. Um, but it was mostly, so one day my girlfriend walked downstairs or my wife walked downstairs and saw me scoop in a, a full container of Greek yogurt into a container into a Tupperware container. And then she kind of looked at me half judging, half, half concerned. Like, do you think there's ever a possible, oh, it's possible you could eat too much protein? And, you know, maybe I got a little defensive at first and I'm like, no. Uh, but then I kind of calmed down, thought about it. And I'm like, you know what? I should, I should really look into that. And the information that I have been looking at actually kind of does 
lean towards that I am eating too much protein, but I'm confused because I feel so good. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I want to prove my girlfriend wrong, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Girlfriend or yeah, wife? Yeah, I was going to say, which I'm one? Just, yeah, girlfriend yeah, yeah, or your yeah, wife? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah. might yeah. be the problem. Future yeah. wife. Future wife. I'm glad she's just focused on the protein and not your girlfriend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, all right. So, look, uh, there's, there's, there's like these interesting kind of fears around uh, eating, quote unquote, too much protein. And the fears tend to be something like it's going to stress your kidneys. It's not good for your body. Like there's something inherently unhealthy about protein. Um, But those are all totally unfounded. Now, now to be quite honest, what you're doing is actually quite difficult. Like the average person would be, it would find it very challenging to eat 250 grams of protein from whole food because it's so satiating. Okay. Yeah. So I can see on the people's faces. Yeah, so <laughs> whenever that's <they see> neat. <laughs> exactly. So people listening right now, um, like if you're doing this from whole natural sources, you're probably not going to be able to get to 250 grams. I can't do this on a regular basis. It's just it fills me up too much. But really, what you should be looking for are signs of poor digestion. You know, feeling lethargic. Is your protein crowding out other essential nutrients? Like sometimes people get so focused on protein that they don't eat enough healthy fats or just essential fats. But mm-hmm. otherwise, you're, there's nothing at all. There's zero wrong no. with what you're doing. I think you're killing it. Yeah, you feel good. Everything's going great. Especially, yeah, especially since you're getting most of this through Whole Foods. Right. Because you're the, the, more than likely, you're not missing out on those other macronutrients if you're getting it through Whole Foods. Correct. You know, where people screw up is they're so infatuated with the protein. They don't get enough fat. Yeah, all they're doing is taking mm-hmm. whey protein in like crazy to hit that kind of high target. But if you're getting that through Whole Foods, you're going to get your, your mix of healthy fats with the protein. So... I mean, if you feel good, that's the main. That's the main thing. Now, sometimes people aren't aware. Of, okay, so maybe you feel good, like you're in good shape and you're strong, but then you're like farting every five minutes. <laughs> so yeah. if 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 your fiance is telling you that because you, your <laughs> shit stinks so bad, okay, that could also be a sign that you are a little high on protein. So even though you feel st- like. We tell the story of our good buddy Craig, who we were all. <laughs> so I, so I, 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 I think I'd roll him under the bus all the time. Just, well, because he, I, the reason why I bring him up right now, alias okay, at least. Okay, shout out to our boy Craig. Is <laughs> for people who don't know, it's Craig Caperso. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> he's in incredible shape, right? Incredible shape, and he would tell you that he feels amazing and like that. But I could tell you right now, by the, the smell of his farts clearing out <laughs> uh, a sweet. That it's like, I hey, mean, bro, that's too much protein. I mean, that's so it's that memorable, it's right? Gross. It is that memorable. Yeah. So yeah. that that so that is why I bring that up, right? So maybe she's like, hey, bro, you should you maybe you should check. She's the trying protein. to be nice. Yeah, yeah. she's trying to be nice. Hey, you're not to married you. yet. Just wait till you get married. <laughs> you're <laughs> you're <laughs> farting. You should be a lot more honest. And yeah. you think because you got abs and you're strong and you look good and everyone's telling you look good that you feel great, right? But yeah. it, deep down, you you are having a little bit of digestive issues and you don't realize it because you got yeah. so much gas. Yeah, you got yeah. just pay attention to how you feel. Peeling. Pay yeah. attention to your digestion. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'll start asking it. around. Yeah, <laughs> and by, by the way, the most common thing that can happen from someone who's eating "quote unquote" too much protein for their body isn't actually the the flatulence. It's more like constipation. That's much more common. Mm-hmm. Okay, where somebody just has tr- they just are more constipated. Um, okay, and so, so they need to switch that out for some fiber. You know, yeah. if your calories are too high, you're gaining too much body fat. You know, you could cut your protein, and you'd be totally fine. Um, I think you're good, bro. But you're, yeah. you're doing okay. Yeah, and I'm glad good. you brought up this question because there's this interesting fear around protein like it's you know somehow bad for you. And it, it's it just – And by the just, way – It isn't. And this is totally different if we're just talking to some random person who's not exercising. You're weight training consistently. Yeah. So you're yeah. you're putting a lot of that to work. It would be totally different if you were just this person who's sitting around doing nothing and you're eating that much protein. Yeah. But you lifting weights, yeah. uh, your uh, your your body's put it to work. You now I will s- great. I will say this: it was a hu- it was a huge bump in calories in a relatively short period of time, and right now you're mm-hmm. feeling lots of positive uh, effects. Uh, I would still pay attention to how your body's responding because you may be in that initial phase of utilizing all these calories <laughs> for muscle and stuff. But at some point, you may it's not this isn't guaranteed, but you may find that body fat uh, starts to accumulate a little too quickly, in which case you may need to cut down. But other than that, you're doing a great job. Stay the course. And he's going to stay the course because he's frozen. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, yeah, so I don't you uh, I, I don't think that was too fast. It's 500 every three weeks, bro. Uh, no, no, That's no. That's basically 100 a day. Yeah. No. Yeah, he did 500. No, no, no. Three. Uh, no. Uh, he, oh, every oh. three weeks, he went up 500 calories. Oh, so you're looking at weeks. you're looking at six weeks going from 2,000 to 4,000? Yeah. Yeah, no, not even more than that. 
He, every three weeks, he went up 500 calories. So that's calories. Like nine weeks later? Yeah. Oh, I guess he might be yeah. okay. No, it's great. It's yeah. like it's all like he's a hundred and something calorie. I, I thought it was, was worded. I was a little confused. Yeah, I thought, it, I, I no, thought I, it was from 2000 to 4,000 no, to 3 You know, I was, I'm was. i looking at this and I'm like, dude, this is exactly my reverse diet out yeah. of a show. Because I would, except for I wouldn't quite get down to 2,000. I'd get around 22 to 2,300 yeah. for a show. And then I would bring back about 500 calories every couple of weeks as yeah. I was pulling back on cardio and stuff. And this the, is exactly the mo- what it looked like. The most yeah. interesting part of this whole question to me is that at his body weight and his size, that he can eat 250 grams of protein oh, yeah. from Whole Foods. And it just highlights the individual variants. Dude, you know, like not a lot of people can do that. I you literally, this would be a forced feed, a force feed day for me. Yeah. There's no way I'd be able to maintain this because it's just so satiating. It just crushes my appetite. I mean, I also think he's he's also witnessing, I mean, the guy's He's yeah. was a two thousand a calorie day. Hungry for it. Yeah. He, yeah, he's lean. He's lifting weights pretty good. I mean, his body's anabolic. Like, yeah, his yeah, body is really just primed right to build right now, and it's it's he's hungry. So I mean, I, this is perfect. And I'm glad you did ask him to explain himself, even though I think Justin and I pretty much hit the things that were the main concerns. Yeah. So we could get out what I think a lot of people get, and that's I think the messaging. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of messaging right now yeah, around the like fear around it. And you called that a long time ago that that they were going to demonize protein. That protein's this bad thing now. It's just like stop it. Not with somebody that's that healthy, that's lifting weights, that feels great. Like no. And one more thing, I'll address uh, with protein. <clears throat> protein does stimulate growth factors in the body, and these growth factors can also stimulate uh, cancer proliferation. But that does not mean that these growth factors are pro-cancer. It just means that things that make your body grow, if you have cancer, will also feed cancer. What else is this true for? Everything that you eat, all your nutrients. So there is nothing inherently unhealthy about protein at all. In fact, it's one of the the healthiest things you can aim for um, in your diet. Do you think that there is a a, a large portion of people, though, that and you know, not to keep hammering our poor friend Craig, but they get. <laughs> I, I mean, so. the reason why I bring that up, I, I know I was that way in my mid twenties. I was <laughs> I was taking in so much protein, and that to me was the like the sign. Like I was either on the toilet or yeah. I was like farting like crazy, yeah. Yeah. and I just thought that, that was part of it. Like, oh, I gotta eat this much protein in order to get big, and then you know, when you eat this much protein, you you're gassy like this, like crazy, and it's like. That's not true at all. Like the, I'm, I don't, I don't have that much gas at all compared to yeah. what yeah. I used to. I think too, like the source of it, like you know, if you're giving a lot of like protein powder and you're you're drinking it fast and you yeah. get the air and everything in between. So I think there's a little bit of a, a slower digestive element to like eating, um, you know, animal you're, sources. Dude, I tell you what, I've done 220, 230 grams of protein from Whole Foods on a consi- relatively consistent basis. It takes me five meals to do so. But I don't get the gastro distresses yeah. when I'm making up my protein intake with like 100 grams of protein shakes. You know. Yeah. Our next caller is Kitty from New Jersey. Kitty, how can we help hey you? Hey guys. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for taking my my question. Um, yeah, you know, like everyone always says, you, you know, listening to you for a very long time, uh, probably like 2017, 2018-ish, and. Even though I'm not, I've never done weightlifting stuff. I just try and squirrel your information away in my brain. Um, never thought I'd actually have a question for you, though. So. Um, Let's hear it. Yeah. Well, thank you for okay. the support. Yeah. So, um, my question was: I recently joined a gym and started taking the Les Mills Body Pump classes, and I enjoy the classes. But I'm wondering if there's a way to keep taking the class but make it less about cardio in order to lift heavier weights and it's like I like group classes. That's what gets me to work out. And I've never joined the gym before. So just getting to a gym and doing these body pump classes is a big step for me. Um, and then background about me, I'm 52 years old, never had to worry about weight. Um, however, um, going into menopause, you know, about a couple years ago, it has created like a body and body fat challenge for me. Um, and whenever my weight goes up, that seems to be like the new number it stays at. Um, and in the past I've done yoga and pole dance classes and I I never had to worry about my weight, Uh, even though I I ate pretty healthy, but never had to worry about my weight, stopped working out once COVID hit. And now I'm just trying to get back in, like find the rhythm. Okay. Before, before, uh, I think it's important I answer since I probably hammer the 
the the classes the most. And I want to point yeah, out. Yeah, I know. I want to point out something that you said though that's really important. Mm -hmm. That you know, it, it's a it's a big step for you to be in there, and the classes are so supportive. And this is where there's always an exception to the rule when I'm talking to somebody, right? So. I know I come down hard sometimes on class settings, and I've said things like all class. <laughs> I wish that all camps or classes should be should die, should right? Die. So, yeah. and <laughs> and here's quotes. and here's the thing. So, if you were a client of mine and you said that to me, then I would encourage you to continue doing the classes, and I'd probably ask you like, how well do you know the instructor, and could you go over to the instructor and say, hey. I'm going to like every other set set out so I can rest between these and that way I can push the weight because there's ways for you to potentially do that, right? You're not going to follow exactly the kind of rhythm that they follow in those classes. Like they kind of follow music or like a beat and, yeah. it's, like, and it's like nonstop. Very fast. Right. <clears throat> and so what you could do is you, whenever you guys go over and you load up the weights, I know on the, the, on the little bar or whatever like that, and you're getting ready to do like some sort of a, a, a you know, circuit that you do, you know, 10 to 12 reps and then you set the bar down and you pick a, and then you keep adding weight to where that 10 to 12 reps is heavy and challenging for you. And then you give yourself at least a minute rest before you get, you, you join back into the rhythm of the class. And so if you communicated that with the instructor that, Hey, I want to really push getting stronger. I'm going to give myself some rest. I just want you to know that, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to your class or like, it's not that I can't keep up with the pace. It's that I really want to get strong. That's what uh, my focus is. That's how I would modify a class like that is I would force you to rest after every 12 to 15 reps. I wouldn't let you do more than 12 to 15 reps. And I'd, I'd always be pushing you to add weight that makes 12 to 15 reps really challenging. So that, that would be the first part of how I would start my advice to you. Then the next thing would be, Let's also assess what's going on. If you're if you're still not seeing results, we might have to move away from a class setting because you need to do something that's more structured like a MAPS anabolic program. But I would at least try and modify my advice because of what you said from the very beginning of how much this is supportive and help helping you to get going in the right direction. Yeah. Kitty, can I can I just say I love you, right? I love that <laughs> you're in there, you're trying, you're 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 definitely communicating very honestly. Um, and I love working with people like you. So I, I, I want to ask you this. What is it mm -hmm. about the class that is getting you to go on a consistent basis? Is it the schedule? Is it the people that you, are you did you make friends there? Like, let's, let's isolate what it is about the class that you have found that is helping you stay consistent. So I, I do like a class environment. Um, just, you know, with the potential to meet new people where I, I don't see that happening out in like the, on the floor um, where all the weights are. And within the class, since like, listen, my, my background's yoga and pole dance, I don't know, I don't have the knowledge of form when it comes to lifting. And within these classes, they just yell out cues, like, you know, shoulders back or, or yeah. whatever. And like they show they'll dem like do demos on um, on certain things. And I feel like I need that because I don't, I don't have that knowledge and I'm super body, body aware when I'm doing yoga, but when it comes to weights, it's, it's, I'll be lifting and like in my head, I'm seeing myself like lifting with perfect form. But if, when I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, having that constant, um, like someone yelling out, you know, you know, something about form yeah. or, you know, the way people are holding their body. Like, even if it isn't specified at me, you know, it's just a reminder, like, oh yeah, shoulders back or, or whatever. Gotcha. Um, so that's what I like about that. And I also don't know what to do and I'm, su I would be super uncomfortable and just really intimidated to just go out on the floor and start playing around with like the free weights or any of like any of the equipments. Yeah. I'm, yeah. it, it, this is that the, world is so foreign to me. This is the route for okay. sure. This is what I thought. Um, and and by, by the way, you are, this is very common. This is extremely common. Whenever uh, I would get a you know average member that would come in, especially female, this is what they would feel when we would sit down and talk. 
Um, mm-hmm. So this is super common. So let me, I'm going to be objective and then I'm going to, okay. I'm going to help you out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Objectively speaking, the, the form guidance you're getting from an instructor in a classroom full of 20, 30, 40 people is garbage. Okay. So they can't possibly help you with your form in any real substantial way because of the class setting. And I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from yeah. someone who, who ran gyms and owned gyms. So you're not really getting the benefit necessarily from that, from an objective standpoint. But I know, I think the benefit you're getting is the, it's helping you with your lack of confidence in your form and technique and you're with other people. So you don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. You don't feel isolated. It is a bit scary to work out, uh, you know, in the free weight area. So I totally get Mm -hmm. that. So there's a couple things I I can do to kind of help you with that. One is we all, you know, we have programs. I'm going to set you up with some of our programs. Then you got videos and demos in there showing you what to do. And two, and this is the part you're going to have to do on your own is I want you to venture out and this is exposure therapy, like any other fear. If you go out and you start doing it, it kind of sucks at first, but then Mm -hmm. it gets easier. And then the confidence you're going to get from doing this in the weight room and practicing on your own, and then the results you're going to get because the training is going to be much more appropriate, is what's going to give you the the lifelong sustaining motivation, energy, and discipline to do this forever. Okay, So if this is something Mm -hmm. you want to do for the rest of your life, you're going to have to tackle this at some point. At some point, you're going to have to tackle this. I think you should do it now, okay. uh, especially because you're kind of in the middle of this. You're talking about menopause, and, and those hormones can definitely affect how the body stores body fat. The, the best the best exercise solution for menopause is strength training. Like yeah. nothing traditional. Posit- traditional strength training. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not you know cardio with weights or what body pump is, right? Like real strength training is your absolute best approach. Now, if this is still too scary, may I suggest the hybrid approach? Okay. How many days a week are you going to the gym right now? Well, my first month I was going almost every single day. And then I was like, whoa, wait, I'm not seeing results at all. I don't feel like I'm getting stronger. Mind pump would tell me to back off. So July, I cut it like close to half so mm-hmm. maybe about three days a week, 15 days okay. I was going last month. Okay. Do you think you could do this? Do you feel like you could do like, one yeah. class a week mm-hmm. and, go the opposite and one 30 minute strength training session on your own a week where you watch our videos and kind of follow our cues? Do you, could you do that or does that feel too much? It feels like it's not enough class time. Okay. Like, okay. Like it, feel, it feels like, I, I mean. I, I, I'm telling you right now it is, but I will say this. You okay. can do two classes and yeah. one strength training session. That's what I was going to start with. Yeah. My goal is to get you to, to, to slowly ease into strength training. So I don't want okay. you to do a ton of classes because that'll <clears throat> impede on your recovery. But you could do two classes and then one like 30-minute strength training like on your okay. own, I think would be okay. Do you think I, you could do okay. that? Yeah. Have you looked into at all, like hiring a personal trainer or a coach or anybody there in the um, gym? So with the gym membership, I do get uh, a personal trainer, like one session every month. Perfect. And I met with her, like I told them, like, like you know, they asked me what I want. I'm like, I want somebody who works with women in menopause who are struggling with, like fat loss Mm -hmm. and they put me with someone she's quite young Mm. um gave me like a little bit of a program to do but i don't is it good i don't know because i've never worked with a personal trainer and we did the whole like in body yeah Um, here's the here's the move here's the move for the trainer since we do have mm -hmm. that is use that trainer to i I want we're going to give you a program exactly and we're going to make the trainer take you through that and what, what do you, and you already said it earlier like it's the form and technique you want to build confidence yeah. around that mm-hmm. so we don't want her for anything else i don't give a shit about her knowledge yeah. around menopause i don't give a shit about her knowledge just around just teach me these exercises. Exercises. i just want her to be there to to give you the individual coaching on the form and technique it's yeah. like it'll be the easiest job of her life like right. she's already got the program laid out i don't need her mm-hmm. giving you nutritional advice like literally watch well, my form tell me how i can that's improve right. and and then you okay. know take me uh, here's, each exercise here's the program i'm following the guys from mind pump you know and, and then we're going to put you in the forum so you'll be in the forum with us so we can have okay. so we can keep an eye on you you can give us feedback of what's going on 
Uh, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with Sal. Now, program-wise, I actually think that Maps 15 would be a good way to ease her in. Uh, Maps 15 would be great. Uh, we could even do one 30-minute session, whatever is going to make you, Kitty, feel... Because uh, I, I get the fear and I get the intimidation. Okay, I totally get mm -hmm. it. Um, I, I managed gyms for a long time. This was a huge hurdle for a lot of people. It's super yeah. common. Oh, yeah. So you have to ease yourself in. Otherwise, it's going to be you're going to be so apprehensive. You're not going to want to do anything at all. And I think you understand that. That's why you're saying mm -hmm. you want to do these classes. So honestly, yeah. the, any approach that allows you to ease yourself in to the traditional strength training is going to be the right approach. Whether it's one 30 minute session or one mm -hmm. strength training exercise every day or two where you're in there just for 15 minutes, like with maps 15, okay. both options, uh, I think will be, will work perfectly for you. And then, and then to add more, is it, let me ask you this. Is it feasible for you financially to hire a personal trainer to train you once a week, every week? Or is that out of the question? Because training is expensive one-on-one. -on -one, so yeah, that, that is a, a barrier for me. Okay. And yeah. I do work in the financial industry, but I, I'm one of those firms that was just taken over by another firm. So no worries. we're all just kind of sitting around waiting for our jobs to be. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, we can work around that. We, we can do. work around that. Yeah. No, no worries at all. So let, let me do this. I'm going to send you MAPS Anabolic, and I'm going to send you MAPS 15, okay? If you want to mm -hmm. just do one 30-minute workout a week, okay. follow MAPS Anabolic pre-phase. The pre-phase workouts will be what you'll follow. Okay. Okay. If you want to just do like a couple exercises most days, mm -hmm. then MAPS 15 is the way to go. By the way, there's the MAPS 15, you can you can use a suspension trainer, which is you could do at home. Okay. Yeah, so well, that, I, that you don't even need weights. You could just use your body in a suspension trainer and you don't even need to go to the gym. You could do it at home. Well, what I like about MAPS 15 <laughs> is like once you start learning the technique and you start sharpening that, you just practice it. It's not a workout. You're just practicing what you've just learned. And so it's like mm -hmm. laid out for you pretty simply. Uh, and you'll be surprised how strong you're going to get and how um, confident you're going to get as a result. Yeah. We're, and we're going to put you in the forum. So whichever one you choose, just keep us in, in the loop. So let okay. us know uh, what you start with and how you start to ease in and good or bad. I would love to hear from you on your experience so that we can work mm -hmm. through that because to Sal's point, this is unbelievably common. You are not alone in this situation. This is probably a majority of clients that I think all of us have trained. And so mm -hmm. we would, we just want to slowly ease you into getting confident. That way, this is the way to do it. You know, yeah. one, one time a week, doing a few exercises or a 30 minute workout in there. You've got, by the way, I don't know if you know, but the programs, I mean, you bring your iPhone in there and then we've got follow along videos. So yep. you can watch somebody do oh, the form. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. And you, and you okay. put in your headphones, you can listen to the cues. And so we have every, like, it has a full breakdown that you can watch. And we encourage people too in the forum to video themselves while they do exercises and post the, the videos and we'll critique for you. So we'll let okay. you know. And yeah. the forum is really supportive that way of uh, lots of other people that were in your exact shoes just a year or two years before, and, and they're now feeling confident to lift themselves. So there's a great community. If you like that community of supportive mm -hmm. people that are all kind of going through it, you're going to get that in there too. So yeah. he and, set you up. And Kitty, uh, I and want you to pay most close attention to your strength. That If you're getting stronger, <laughs> like if you could do more reps with good form, if you could add mm -hmm. weight – then you're probably moving in the right direction. For sure. You're very, very likely moving in the right direction. The scale can lie to us. So I wouldn't worry so much about the scale unless you get these crazy fluctuations in body weight. Otherwise, like if you're getting stronger, everything, including hormones, is probably moving in the right direction. And then lastly, like there's I, I, the other end of this is so awesome. I want to encourage you because I, I, right now you're, it feels like this kind of like scary thing. With practice and the other end of this is like so much confidence. It's so awesome. You're going to have this amazing relationship with exercise and you're going to unlock this, this tremendous potential right now. That's just, it's just under the surface. So I, you know, I hope that encourages you. So, you know, stay at it. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It, it, you, you guys definitely encourage me. Um, and if it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't even have thought about lifting weights. Um, but I also like I'm also someone where like I like my workouts to be fun. And that's another part of like the the whole class experience. Sure. Of, like mm -hmm. You know you know what's sure. you know what's fun too, Kitty? Seeing yourself get great results. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. 
You know, because I, I, that's a that's a common thing clients would say to me too. Oh, I love the class; it's so fun. And then, and three months later, they're frustrated because they're not seeing results. It's not anymore. fun anymore, yeah. and it's not fun anymore because yeah. you're you're not seeing the results from it. When it's, you're when you're seeing great results from you learning a new skill while also building confidence, totally. Watch how fucking fun that is. It's it's it really does transform that way. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of the fun you're having now is just the fact that you're in there and there's a lack of anxiety and fear, and that feels amazing. And I understand that, but I'm here to tell you that the fearings and anxiety that you feel with strength training in the weight room will go away. And that is going to make things a lot different. It's going to make things feel a lot better. Okay. We got you. We're going to be right. with you. We're going to be with you along this process. Okay. So make sure you get inside the forum. Doug's going to send you access to all the programs in the forum. And if anybody messes with you in the gym, take a picture, send it to us. We'll broadcast yeah. it on yeah. the podcast. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two seconds. Yes. Uh, guys, thanks so much. You got um, it. Like I never thought I'd ever like have a reason to reach out to you and you guys are, you get me through my work days um, every day working from home alone. Um, so you guys are, have made a huge impact on my life. I appreciate awesome. that. Thanks, Thank you, Kitty. Awesome. Thanks guys. You got it. You ever want to just hug someone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Virtual hug. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I, I know this helped a lot of people who are listening because uh, that she's is a, normal, very she's common. Very, and she's very mm -hmm. honest. Tell me that wasn't like, uh, I don't know, 60% oh, of your clients easy, that you had right yeah. there? Easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I, you know what? I, I The reason why I get so, it makes me so excited to hear something like this is because when I would get, I know you guys are the same thing. When you would get a client like this, you knew that they didn't even, they didn't even realize the transformation that they were about to embark on. And I don't mean physically that mm -hmm. happens as a result, but the mental and psychological uh, transformation from going to where she is to a few months later, walking in confident. Wow. It's like a whole new world. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new world. And th we have an opportunity here to create, uh, to really encourage someone mm -hmm. to create a lifelong good relationship with exercise, and she's got enough courage to take that first step. So pretty awesome. Well, the, I like this question because it gave me the opportunity to explain myself with the group classes should die comment that I've made more than once. And this is a perfect example of how I, I would still find a way to modify that. Yeah. You know, it's like, yes, I the ultimate goal is for us to get move her all the way into just strength training, traditional strength training by herself. But I, I trained so many people like this that I couldn't just rip the Band-Aid off. Mm -hmm. I had to slowly like yep. get, build the confidence. And that that's where something like this, uh, I, I get it. You know, I, I understand that because I obviously trained a lot of people like that on, okay, that's okay. We can still kind of use it right now. This is how I want you to modify it. But then the goal is to move you over in this direction. And trust me, once I get you there, you're going to be so happy, you know? Our next caller is Amy from Florida. Amy, how's it going? How can we help you? Hey guys, good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, thanks for having me. So I have a question that I've not heard answered in any form yet, and I've been listening for a few years. So that's uh, here we go. So if my goal is to lose body fat and gain lean muscle, what's the best way to do that if I can't include the big four compound lifts? Let's first figure I, out. Yeah. Why? Tell, tell us why we can't do the big <laughs> lifts again. Yeah, so um, I've been weightlifting since high school. Um, in my mid-30s, I got into powerlifting, so I've been lifting for a long time and have sort of accumulated some injuries. Um, I have a bicep tear, or I had a bicep tear, um, two surgeries to repair that. I have a slight uh, shoulder separation. I've got sacroiliitis in my back, which is fairly new. Um, and then as of a couple days ago, I found out I have a torn meniscus. So... Uh, right here or there. So um, every time I try to do you know, squatting or benching or overhead pressing, it's pretty painful or um, you know, not, not ideal. Okay. By the way, for clarification, I'm reading your question here. You competed in powerlifting at an extremely high level. You have a, uh, let's see here, multiple state and national records and one world record squat. I did at one point. Wow. Yeah. What was your what was that squat number at what body weight? Just just for fun. Um, I was in the eighty point five kilo weight class and three forty one. Three forty one. Wow! Yeah. Wow! That's hell. Impressive. That's awesome. Okay, so look, here's the deal. Uh, uh, the reason, obvi obviously, I don't need to tell you this. The reason why you have hit some of these injuries or you have this accumulation of injuries is you went beyond mm -hmm. strength training for health and mobility and fitness into extreme performance. Competitive. Like, 
competitive extreme performance. It's just it's just a part of the game. You sacrifice yeah. things like longevity and health uh, for you know for high level performance. Okay. That being said, here's the deal. It's unlikely. It's very unlikely that you you can never or should never squat, deadlift, bench press, or overhead press. It's very likely that you're going to need to do some uh, targeted, let's say, mobility and correctional exercise work and work your way into being able to do those exercises again, but not train them yeah. like you did at the level that you were at, okay? So in other words, I mean, you squatted a tremendous amount of weight. Like, I don't even think you probably would want to work out with half that much. You don't even need half yeah. you, you know, now- Multi-planar work and unilateral work. I so, mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the- Honestly, you've been living in that uh, sagittal plane for so long yeah. at such a high level. You know, your body could benefit so much from just moving differently and strengthening other um, ranges of motion. And so if that's your focus, you know, even if that's for a few years, like there's nothing wrong with like diving full on, full deep in that direction. I see I see map symmetry, which is laid out with isometrics first, then unilateral, and then a final phase of bilateral work. But when you get to the final phase, you go super light, super light, and super light for you is like like less than fifty percent of what you're used to moving the barbell at. Just make the weight feel heavy and with then, your form, and then you move from a program like that to like a maps performance. That that type of yes. training for you, especially with your your expertise and and your ability to do good form and technique, like that should be your focus. Yeah. Amy, and, you know what the challenge is going to be with you. Right. It's not wanting to go heavy because yeah, you're strong as you're, fuck. Yeah, you're, the <laughs> challenge true. has nothing to do with the exercises with no, you. No, okay, Squats, no. deadlifts, bench presses, overhead presses, uh, when done a particular way, are, are extremely restorative and protective yeah. on the body. Okay, The challenge is not the exercises. The challenge is going to be how you do the exercises and the mentality of your workouts. Training mm -hmm. at the level that you trained at, it's probably you, you're probably even going to be unaware that you're going to push beyond – where you're supposed to, I I will encourage you to do this. This is something that I think powerlifters can benefit from uh, tremendously. W when you do your lifts at your level, you're so focused on leverage uh, and biomechanical advantage that you're not even thinking about do I feel this in my shoulders or my back or my chest or anything. I want you to start training, follow our programs, and think like a bodybuilder. Do I feel this in my hamstring? Do I feel this in my delt? Do I feel this in my mid back? Focus on muscle connection. It's going to be totally foreign to you, uh, but I think that's going to help keep you away from the kind and style of training that you know kind of caused some of these problems in the first place. Map symmetry is a perfect program. It's perfect for you, and it sets you up for exactly that because you're not even going to worry about any of these these big compound lifts until the end of the program. And don't look at the weight on the bar. It's going to be so hard for you to look at the weight and be like, this is stupid. I want to lift way more. Mm. Don't worry about it. Focus on the feel. Go slow, controlled. The first two weeks is all isometrics. Don't skip that. I know you're going to want to skip that. Don't skip that. And just do it the way that we're saying, and you're gonna go. You're gonna get. Re you're gonna go real far. You're gonna feel really good if you do it that way. A good, a good way, a good piece of advice for a, an ex power lifter moving in this direction, and uh, obviously knowing that you're gonna have a challenge with you know reducing the weight significantly is become obsessed with the negative. Become obsessed yeah. with you know lowering the weight extremely slow in all the movements that you're doing and feeling connected in the muscles like Sal was saying like that is because powerlifters are so focused on the explosion the leverage and the technique of moving the bar hard and fast right this mm -hmm. way now you're 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 shifting over to slowing it way down feeling the muscles like Sal yeah. was saying and like literally become yeah. obsessed with the eccentric portion of the exercise. But let me let me emphasize the feel the muscle part cuz powerlifters do mm -hmm. go slow on the negative, but they don't go slow the same way a bodybuilder would. A, a powerlifter is going slow on the negative to maximize leverage for the lift. They want to stay in the groove whereas a bodybuilder is like, "Can I lower the bar and feel it in my chest?" Okay? So that's the big difference, okay? So it's not just about going slow on the negative, it's about feeling it in the target muscles, which is going to help you avoid going in the direction that caused those injuries in the first place. Okay. All right. So, so being back in uh, back squatting at 185 is probably <laughs> too much yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah I, like, uh, do <laughs> like, map, map symmetry is the perfect program to yeah. get into because you're going to do exercise you've never done before. So you're probably not going to you're not going to know how to judge the weight anyway. So just follow that program and then follow by mass. That's a perfect recommendation. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. You got right, it. Amy. Thanks All for right. calling in.
All right. Take care. She's stronger than you. <laughs> I just want to point that she out. She definitely is right now. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> you know, this. I mean, it's, it's good to point that out because uh, people who don't understand strength training will often point to the extremes yeah. and say, "Oh, look, it's you know so dangerous or it hurts you or whatever." It's like, look, you the, the, when you do anything at an extremely high level, you are sacrificing You're pressuring things. the hinges. Yeah. You know, I mean, she just went like to a level that not a lot of people can go, and it's she. She just went. to uh, to the point where it's like, you know, your body's so strong, it's going to um, sort of alter, your, you know, and, and put wear and tear in your joints. So that's why, for me, I, I kind of relate to this in a little bit. Not that I was like a high-level power lifter or anything, but just doing um, squats, doing bench, doing overhead press, doing power cleans forever. I vowed to never do a power clean again. Like, she's at that point, oh. she's like, oh, I'm not going to do – like, I could I could tell what she's getting at. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. want to do any of these lifts anymore. They're yeah. just breaking me, yeah. right? But yeah. she has a different relationship with it right now because of she was at such a high level. And so I actually went for a year, like, away from it and just did nothing but body weight and got into Olympic rings. And it was, like, the, big, the best thing I could have done to restore my joint health and, and stability. But – uh, you know, thankfully we have a program that sort of like guides her through that process. Well, I'm glad you went that way, Jesse, because another thing I was going to add, hopefully that she listens to this, is that even though symmetry is laid out for you to move into the bilateral stuff at the end, there's nothing wrong with you repeating the phase before and staying unilateral. And not going there, if right. you And because, Justin, you said something that, I, that was my concern is that she knows herself better than we know her. Mm -hmm. And she knows that when she does these squat overhead, these big lifts, that she keeps getting hurt her because she, her tendency is to push the weight and she's going to feel like she's not doing anything. Especially if, if she starts to feel good. Right. So if you listen to this, Amy, and you do know that you will have this tendency to keep wanting to put weight on the bar because you know you can because you were so much, you're so strong. There is nothing wrong with you actually not doing those lifts and repeating the phase before and staying unilateral. Performance is mostly unilateral stuff. If it's not, you can change out your squats for Bulgarian split stance or lunges or step ups. So you know how to do that because you're an advanced lifter. Just supplement some of those uh, exercises if you know that you have a tendency to do that. And there is nothing wrong with someone at her level just ignoring those lifts for a totally. year until you've got to totally. a place where you know you won't do that. Our next caller is Giannis from Greece. Giannis, how's it going, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. I'm very grateful for um, all the content that you that you produce. It's been really helpful uh, to me, especially because since I'm in the beginning of my journey. Um, yeah, so I have two questions uh, for you tonight, today. I want really the nutrition and um, another one more about workout types, if you, if I could say. All right, yeah, let's do it. it. All right, man. <clears throat> so if it's fine, I would uh, rather uh, read the, the question that I wrote. So um, yeah, assuming I hit the one gram of protein per pound of uh, per pound of body weight while in a cut, would there be any benefit in terms of muscle building or at least muscle preservation by consuming more calories and increasing the deficit? traditional um, uh, low intensity cardio such as walking. Uh, for example, is there a difference between uh, eating 2,500 calories and burning 500 for, from activity compared to eating 3,000 and burning 1,000? Yeah. I'm asking that question because uh, I've heard uh, you advise many times the listeners to cut on a higher calorie index by first reverse dieting. So I guess it's kind of similar. No, it's a good question. This, okay, yeah. so Giannis, I'm going to rephrase this. It's so a great question. For someone yeah. listening, it's like, okay, I'm at a certain amount of calories. My protein intake is good. Would I get better results if I increase my calories and then burn those off through additional activity? Okay, so that's kind of what you're asking. It all depends yes. on your total activity and recovery. If you're relatively sedentary, then the increased calories and increased activity is probably going to help. It, it'll just be better for your health. If you're already really active um, and you're kind of pushing the limit with your training, then increasing calories and increasing activity might actually backfire. Yeah. Depends so, on your recovery a lot. Yeah. So, like, are you a very active person anyway, or would you say you're mostly, you know, you're relatively sedentary? I mean, uh, I play basketball twice a week. Oh. I also cycle. Oh, so yeah. I was I was thinking mostly about walking because I've heard many times talking about walking that it's like this harmless kind of activity. Or did I? 
You're fine. Get that's wrong. Yeah, you're, you're fine, Janice. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I would. I, I think you're, you're. You don't need to add calories and add activity. You're doing plenty of activity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would actually play with adding calories anyway with your activity mm-hmm. and what you're doing. Uh, how many calories you're eating right now on a da- daily basis? I mean, I, I try to increase it. I've, I've, I've been like. A, trying to uh, be more serious about fitness and dieting for, uh, from, for a year now. So in the beginning, I did a very uh, uh, a deep cut, <laughs> if I could say 1,800. Uh, but now I've been to 2,500 um, on a cut. I've tried to increase it also to uh, 3,500 and uh, see if I will gain any weight. I gained very slowly some, uh, some, some kilograms, like a half a kilogram in two weeks. With oh. 3,500, so oh, I guess wow. that's good. Giannis. Yeah, that means you're low on yeah, calories. Yeah, increase your yeah. calories. Yeah, yeah. Go up to at least 3,000 or, or yeah. if not 3,500 and, and then keep everything the same. You'll see more muscle right. gains and strength gains. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, awesome. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And then you had a, another yeah, question with question. exercise? Yeah, uh, yeah. The other question is uh, more about exercise. So um, as many people, I guess, I don't really enjoy going to the gym, uh, which is uh, next to my home especially during rush hour, which is most convenient for me. Um, and I actually uh, found that uh, I pre- I, I'm, I'd much rather work out with bands at home. Um, on the other hand, there is a, a gym in my workplace where I can uh, do free weight stuff uh, freely um, uh, once a week. Um, do you think it would be worthwhile to go to the gym uh, once a week for free weight, a uh, full body? And do two extra full body workout, workouts at home with bands or should I stick uh, with a bands only home workout? Oh, I oh, think yeah. it would be great to go to the gym one day a week for like you, doing. You'll get better results. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah. The combination of the two of those would be awesome. Yeah, do that's it. a great combination. I would I would run like a MAPS anabolic workout. So pick one of the MAPS anabolic. If you don't have that, we can send that to you. So I'd run one of the days at full body at the gym and then the other two days like a bands routine. And I think that's great. Yeah. And with the bump in calories, you're going to see some strength and muscle gains for sure. So instead of, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about MAPS anabolic, is it like a one day per week or three days? MAPS anabolic week? gives you two workouts you can do a week. You can choose to repeat one of the workouts to go three days a week. But if you're only going to the gym okay. one day a week- yeah. Pick one of the workouts, do that workout at the gym, and then the other two with your band workouts that you do at home, and you're fine. Yeah, it's full body, okay. so that's that's why we, we can do that like one day a week, and mm-hmm. we can cover it. I think you're going to get phenomenal okay. results doing that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll do exactly. great. Okay, awesome. Thanks. That's yeah. uh, really nice to hear. Yeah, you got it, man. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. See you. You know, the, the, the Greeks uh, and the Italians are very closely related. One of my favorites. going? That just it's hilarious. I have a lot of Greek friends. <laughs> What's funny is that I was going to tease him because <laughs> my Greek friends, whenever we get into like debates, who invented what? Yes, I, just, uh, bro, uh, I was yeah, literally yeah, going to yeah, say my buddies that are all Greek yeah. always talk shit like they, they, it all came for them first. I know, so I know. Italians want to take the credit yeah. for all this stuff like that, and they're like, no, 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 no like no, wars that. that happened thousands of years ago. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. like old ass shit like yeah, that. No, buddy, no, 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 no. We invented no, that. My buddy Spiro and I used to go back and forth, and he would be. We had the best philosophy. The Greeks invented this, and he's like, and I'm like, the Greeks did invent sex. We just invented it with women. So yeah, that's for you, Spiro. If you're uh, yeah. uh, no, you know, so, I mean, great question. What's interesting is his cat, I mean, bro, he ate 3,500 and gained a half a kilo over in two, two weeks. weeks? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a, that's a, he's going to build muscle. That's a that. quick indicator you need to bump your calories. But I, okay, so I do want to address it a little bit further in his, his question because I really like that, uh, to talk about that because. The, and you went the health way, so which was great because I wasn't going to go that. I was going to go purely off of results and yeah. like and and. But that is the right question. Is first like, are you an inactive person? Because if you're an inactive person, you know you should incorporate yeah, eat some more sort of, movement. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you're not doing even you know yeah. six thousand steps a day, you better get It'll out there. You, at right? least do that, right? Like that'll right. be for health reasons. But I always liked manipulating my my nutrients, my calories before I ever played with more activity. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why that is because I it's would be more whenever I because any anytime you're on a diet, we're we're on a we're on a, a a mission to change body composition, right? You're trying to get leaner or you're trying to yeah. build more muscle. And so I want to do that 
with as little activity as I possibly can. That way it's more sustainable when I get there. Because when I get to that goal of, okay, oh, great, I'm shredded. But if I did that through seven days a week, two hours in the gym, the likelihood that I'm going to maintain that for the rest of my life is very little. So yeah. I want to manipulate the nutrition and I want to use the extra activity to like maybe get me through a hump or a plateau or that last bit. Yeah, yeah it's I, easier to add in a little bit of that exercise if you need it, right? Yes. Like at that point. Well, just to add to that, imagine if when you were controlling your calories, you could eat something that was 500 calories and it could mysteriously turn into 300 calories or 800 calories. How hard would that be to control? This is how your metabolism works when you try to manipulate your calorie burn through activity. You may burn an extra 500 calories through activity today, but doing the exact same activity over the next few yeah. weeks, it's all not, of a sudden your body- The math doesn't work like cleanly. Like no, that. your yeah. body changes yeah. how many calories it, 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 it burns and yeah. uses. And so it's a very hard metric to be very hard metric. accurate with. With calories, I mean, you know, if I got three, you know, if I have 300 grams of protein, you know, or, or 300 grams of carbs or whatever, like I know what the calories are. It's not going to mysteriously change or adapt as I consume it, but my metabolism can. So that's really and, to support what you said. And okay. to add even more to that is that what makes that so great is when you don't add all that activity and you've learned to manage wherever your body yeah. composition is through calories, then let's say you got, and this is how I live to this day, right? This is how I manage my, my, my diet and my body composition today. And then I have something that's coming up in say two or three weeks, I can ramp up the activity. My body responds right away because it's it's novel. Yeah. Because I wasn't doing it every single day just to have that 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 uh, physique or that body fat percentage. And so then it allows me to introduce something like that for a, a short period of time to like really sh lean out. And boy, the body responds because it's not something you're already adapted to. Perfect. Look, if you love the show, go to Mind Pump free.com. Check out our guides. We have fitness guides for everybody. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam.